Hello, everyone. We're live. We're live once again. Oh, no. Stop this. Cut that out. No more music for now. For now. No more music for now. What's up, Maldoon? What's up? Uh, lots of exciting stuff to talk about tonight, okay? Lots of, lots of mainstream, very important topics, you know, very serious, important topics that need to be treated with lots of care. You know, obviously, everybody cares about these <laughs> Everybody cares about all these topics we're talking about tonight, okay? Of course, we're talking about maggot edits, okay? This dumb bitch, okay? She hasn't been fully run off the internet, so we're not done yet, boys, okay? That is our explicit and intended goal is to... <laughs> I'm going to get banned. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, 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 Okay. We're going to do this quick segment right here, then we're going to get right into the George Not Found stuff, okay? We're going to be doing this quick segment talking about Maggot, because she doesn't know how to stop running her dumb dog mouth, okay? So here we have the AWT podcast on Flatly Talkies channel, posted one day ago, okay? Thanks, Maggot. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you, Maggot. It's all because of you. That's – you did this. Thank you, Maggot. <laughs> how many, how many, uh, how many viewers did your boyfriend's? Did you guys' uh, Fortnite date have yesterday? I want to know. About the same? Is that how much it had? <laughs> how was your e date? Did it go well? I mean, I assume not, because you had a, a multiple. <laughs> <laughs> multiple third wheelers how unfortunate you're welcome oh i mean you're just so cool and edgy here i mean we can read these i mean you just you just don't care about anything right that's why you're in this chat right now that's why you're uh messaging all these people like that's why you're leaving all these discords you just you don't care about anything right you're just you're just <laughs> you're just an edgy you're just an edgy cool 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 girl okay i mean look at you here you're just you're, you're so cool and and exactly you're just you're just so edgy and cool you drink you drink monsters you're you're super based you say the f slur online i mean wow you're really cool but no you don't care about anything right that's why you're commenting on all these that's why you're in my chat right now that's why you're doing all these other things like you don't care though right that's 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 the point we're making here okay so we have maggot edits in this comment section right here <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> How long will they keep dragging this drama out? Forever, maggot. Forever, maggot. That's how long. Because I'm going to be talking about it right here. So leaving a Discord is worth talking about. No, I'm just saying, like, if you didn't care as much as you're trying to put on, then maybe you wouldn't be leaving all these discords, burning all these bridges, spurging the fuck out at people like Xylee who really haven't done anything to you, right? It's quite, it's just sad behavior. Yeah, I don't the, – the thing is, Maggot, I don't go on – if you want to call, you can call, Maggot. The thing is, though, these energy cans down here, it's – I'm not, like, bragging about drinking energy cans online, okay? It's just a display piece in my room, right? It's like – I'm not online going, ooh, boo, look at me. I'm so – I'm so cool. I'm cool, okay? I'm, I'm so based and cool for saying the Epsilon online and – you know, being this this edgy guy drinking monster, so edgy. I have an energy drink right here, actually. You know, do I need? I don't feel the need to like show it on camera every few seconds and then tweet about it and then post all these like memes about it, right? I mean, that's why you nurture Twitter, right? Is because it's filled with embarrassing. Like, quite frankly, if I posted the stuff you post about on Twitter, I would like kind of kill myself, right? It doesn't matter if you leave the Discord. It just you can't leave a Discord and then claim you don't care after, right? Because you're being a pussy. Oh, I don't care about anything. I'm just this this girl online. I'm so edgy. Uh, and then just leave every Discord. <laughs> Burn every bridge. Fucking spurg the fuck out. Female tipster, literally. You, get, you got recommended to me, funny enough. So, hey, good luck, man. Thank you, Maggot. Thank you. See, maybe I'm not doing so bad if I'm getting rec recommended to Maggot Edits. You know, it's... <laughs> Maybe I'm doing good, okay? Maybe maybe I'm doing based. I mean, like we can we can read what she's re saying right here. How long will they keep dragging this drama out? Taking bets forever, okay? Forever until you delete your channel. 
<laughs> Echo, do be a flip flopper though. I mean, it'd be cool if you could elaborate, but I assume that she won't, considering that she literally never elaborates on anything she says because she's just retarded. Flatly, why are you so dumb, bro? My Discord server was empty until after the drama. Again, these people could just ask and don't make up narratives, lol. Leaving Discord? Leaving Discord equals caring. Left Discord because I knew it would stir shit up. Guess it worked. No, you didn't. You left that... <laughs> See, it's this post hoc rationalization that is so typical of these wall cows, right? This post hoc rationalization of like, oh, actually, I left it to piss you guys all off. No, you left it because you were a dumb bitch and you were spurging the fuck out. Um, yeah, I am because it's really funny, maggot. That's why. Uh, you're spiraling. You're, I mean, you're like a snowball going down a, a hill, right? You just keep embarrassing yourself more and more and more and more and more and more and more. I mean, like, honest, you make me want to throw up with how embarrassing you're acting, right? It's just, I mean, an adult woman acting like this is just fucking, <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I don't know what else to say. I'm, ugh, I'm cringing. You're mad because you got stomped out by literally everyone in the community. And I, you could have been fine. You could have been fine if you just stopped freaking out, took a, took a took a day off, maybe you know, stopped going at Magnetar for like these retarded reasons that nobody ever could really figure out why, right? Nobody could ever figure out why you even went after Magnetar because you literally never you <laughs> you literally never even addressed it, right? Oh, I'm gonna release this official response. Then it never came out, and then you're you're oh Lamp and Doug a W for it never coming out. I'm not attacking Lamp and Doug. I'm just saying you very obviously supported the sweeping and the quelling of the discussion around you, right? That's the reality of the situation. That's what really happened. And now you're in my chat coping about it because you're just so cool and you don't care, right? <laughs> Oh, so Matt Pitt and Beavers didn't start crying about Max and Peapot leaving this. Even if they did, <laughs> even if they did, it just shows that you're mad. You're fucking seething. I mean, you're so mad that people don't agree with you that you're burning bridges with Matt Pitt and Beavers. I mean, how stupid is that? <laughs> okay. I mean, like, seriously. Why, like, why, if you... Like, what other reason do you have to leave this Discord server if you're not mad at them, right? It just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You're mad people don't agree with you. That's, you're, you're freaking the fuck out because people don't agree with you, okay? It's just, it's a sad state of affairs, okay? It's a sad state of affairs. Yandere Evitz. I'd be more than happy for it to find out it's been deleted. What? What? See, you're so mad. You're not. Your sentences aren't even making sense anymore. Like it's so embarrassing. I'd be more than happy for it to find out, but my under. But to my understanding, it's been deleted. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, nobody ever really liked you, Maggot. That's why there was never a. Oh, I mean, some people. <laughs> Some people liked it, Mac. And we have Nicholas Diorio. Uh, yeah, are you gonna have a, a Nick PTSD like the like Tipster does, like all these other freaks have? Mac, why don't you give me a call? Okay, uh, I know you're in one of these servers. We could we could have a little chat. Okay, why don't give me a, why don't you give me a call? Yeah, Matt Pitt never liked you because you're a fucking freak who uses its its pronouns. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's because you're a sp <laughs> maybe because you're you're a retard. <laughs> I mean, like, it is just so sad. It is so sad. Like, you're in these chats, you're in these comment sections having a freak out. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I, I you, you really can't help but pity people like this, you know? It is just, it's so sad. That, like, you had such good standing in the community. You had all these connections. You interviewed Chud Logic. You interviewed Chud Logic. Chud Logic was praising you and Riveter. And you threw it all the all you threw all of it all of it away, just because you couldn't handle people disagreeing with you on the internet. I mean, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I'm gonna keep dragging it on forever because you haven't deleted your channel. It. That's the point. Okay.
Um, so then you, you didn't, you don't respond to me. Of course I said kind of hard for the drama to end when it's you and your group. who made the accusation in the first place. They refused to make, refused to make any proper response despite you saying you would do so and try and quell the discussion. Not sure what else to expect though, from someone who uses dog pronouns, right? I mean, how sad, how, how pathetic. So then, you know, obviously she doesn't respond. Uh, there's your content for the next month. You have a reason to keep talking about it. And, 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 and. yeah, see, also this, like, this cope. No, you did not, Maggot. Where is it then? Where is it? <laughs> what do you mean you responded to me? It's not here, Maggot. It's not here. I don't... <laughs> Okay, I I don't know. Yeah, call in, Maggot. I don't know why you're running. You know, you're you're so cool. You can talk all this shit in the chat, but you won't just talk to me. You you ran on the Turd Island. You know, the second I got in the call, you this you decided to leave. Like you're just so stupid. Hey, are you? Your response. Your this is your response to this guy. How long will it take for you to say how you really feel that you don't like Maggot? And that's why you call them a scammer. I don't like him. Never been a secret. I don't like anyone. See, you don't, like I said, you don't respond to this. That's what I said. If let's put our listening ears on maggot, you know, maybe you can figure it out. Okay. It's just <laughs> like, it's so apparent to me that maggot is having this freak out. She's having this spurg out. She's having all these different emotions and having an emotional spiral where she can't even listen to the things I'm saying. I said, you didn't, I mean, I don't know, Maggot. You fucking left the call as soon as I joined. So what else do you want me to think? So stupid. So stupid. And then, you know, oh, I don't I don't like anyone. LOL. I'm so cool that I don't like anyone. I don't like anyone. Wow. You're so cool. Bro, Nick commented. I don't give a fuck about Nick. Well, okay. I was literally... Yeah, I am a method. True, very true, very based. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was literally memeing on the term island the entire time that I'm like a, a huge Nick fan. I don't like why. Why the fuck would I care what Nick has to say about? Me? If I really cared about like Nick, like if I wanted to be best friends with Nick, right? Why would I talk to? Why would I talk to people like you? Like why? Why would I talk to people like Slug? You know, I. I chit chat with Slug occasionally. If I really wanted to be friends with Nicholas Diorio, why would I chit chat with Slug occasionally? Okay. I think you want. See, you you don't even make sense. You're calling me a meth head, yet you're writing these <laughs> these messages that don't make any sense at all. Okay. You she has developed a full lookout, and she's writing these messages that like they don't even mean anything. They're just completely retarded. And Maggot, what, where is your boyfriend D-Max to defend you, Maggot? I don't see him out here in the trenches defending you. Because even he knows you're fucking up. Even he knows you're acting embarrassing. Even Riveter knows you're acting embarrassing. Everybody knows how embarrassing you're acting. And you're just... Uh, you're stupid. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So here we have uh, uh, this right here. This, well, this really isn't even that much content. But here we have Maggot acting awfully uppity. Nick is just as obsessed with me... Big mad internet dude. I mean, Nick made like unironically like three posts about you. So I don't know. <laughs> we are reaching tipster levels of lolcaldom right here where it's like someone made three posts about me on the internet. They're, they're fucking obsessed with me. Oh my God. <laughs> like, bro, he mentioned you on stream twice. Let's, let's calm down a little bit, maggot. Okay. Like, I mean, like you said, everybody's a nobody. Okay. I'm nobody. Nick's nobody. You're nobody. So if you want to keep having the, like, why do you care so much that Nick is talking about you? Why do you keep having these freakouts because people are talking about you? It's just so weird. It's just so, so odd, right? So here we have this stream that Maggot, Maggot made her big debut back. Okay. She's back guys on this stream. Let's, let's give it a watch. Thank yeah. you. This uh, cost me quite a lot of money. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh. No, I bet. I, 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 as someone who has looked at. Y'all making something out of it. Yeah. Cause you're uppity in this. You're being a total bitch in this as always. I mean, we're going to get into it, but every comment you make in this is absolutely insufferable, especially considering the context. I mean, if I were Bablick in this situation, I would have curb stomped you into the fucking ground 
Proverbally, of course. Well, let, let, let's get into this. If you want to shit talk all these other people in the community, you are the fucking worst, okay? He also shows up to every stream my name is mentioned. It's more odd you think that's odd for someone to like Nick. It's more odd you don't think that's odd from someone like Nick. It's just... <laughs> okay. I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe he likes calling you retarded. <laughs> I mean, I'm jealous of that. Oh, I'm gonna off it. Look who made an appearance too. Hello, Miss Megan. Hey, Megan. Of course, you're making an appearance for this. Uh, it's a rose for you, so obviously I'm gonna show up. You fucking freak. Cool. <laughs> look, look at how wonderful. See, look how uppity. Yeah, Babak is cool with you, but I mean, look how uppity you are. I mean, you are a person who goes by dog pronouns. It's it. Okay, dog pronoun. Let's get that. I don't. Do you think, <laughs> Baggett, do you think I'm like fucking so parasocial with Badwick where like, oh my God, Badwick needs to like every person I like. I don't care if Badwick is cool with you, okay? It's just that you're such a loser and such a freak that Badwick should have, in this moment, curve stomped you into the wall. Like, you're like, oh my God. Yeah, I guess I fucking hate you, Badwick. Okay, being all coy, you use it's its pronouns. You make... Let me pull this up real quick, because this is probably the gayest thing I've ever seen online. Oh, you literally made an edit of yourself. Look at this. I mean, you you have the gall to make fun of other people online, call them the F-slur, when this is you. No, fuck you, bitch. I'm not giving you fucking respect. Respect me first. This is my fucking boot, or... <laughs> oh my god. Was the which cap cut at which cap cut fucking uh template did you use to make this maggot? Oh my god, did you like you're a full grown woman and you're really doing this? Like this is embarrassing. How do you see this isn't completely embarrassing? If this like wow, I, like I'm speechless. Look at how your boss, your boss with that shit, maggot. Oh my god, I mean you're making. <laughs> Obviously, you're an F slur. You're an it's it's. What the fuck? <laughs> what what the hell? Oh my goodness. This reflux, he looks amazing. I know, it's great. I love it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming in here. Look here. Okay, the reason you saying the F slur online is cringe is because you like to be you you. You're just so you like to act like it's cool, right? You're just you don't just say the F slur. You have to like. Yeah, I, I love, like, I'm, I'm so fucking edgy, dude. I'm so fucking edgy, man. Like, it's just, it's, it really is the gayest thing ever. Uh, yeah, anyone existing in the space is embarrassing, sure. But you also existed in the space for the longest time, Maggot. You also exist, you know, you participated in all the same things I participate in. You don't get to act above it at this point, okay? You're just, <laughs> you're just a total freak lolcow, okay? Um... Okay, we're gonna. When are we doing a? <laughs> hey, when are we doing a, a, a maggot roast session? I'll, I'll pull it to that. You know, you should give that give that idea to K Huck right there, maggot. That's a banger stream. Uh, you know. <laughs> Nick, do you think Nicholas? Okay. What are you on about right now? You have Abby ba Blackbird as mod, but not Nick. Why would I have Nick as mod? He doesn't... I don't give... See, this is the thing, right? All these people like Maggot, they lived in these like tribalistic mindsets where they think that like, Oh my god, big creator, I have to mod him in my chat really quick. No, why would I mod Nick? He's not going to come by my streams often enough to do like modding work. Abby Blackbird watches my streams semi-occasionally, so I gave her mod just in case any crazy shit gets posted in my chat, even though, like, realistically, I probably didn't even need to do that, right? Dude, if fucking Mr. Beast came into my chat, there would be no real reason to give him mod, right? It's just so stupid. I'm not a... I don't... I'm not above it. You act like you are. I don't... About, like, see, you're just, it's so it's so incoherent. It's so fucking schizoid brain. It's so fucking deluded. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> I want. It's just. It's so unfortunate. Oh. 
all these people, like, oh my god, you're right. As soon as you stop talking about me, he won't care. True. I mean, yeah. <laughs> maggot cam up challenge. True. Hey, maggot, can you post a, a selfie that doesn't have like 30 filters on it just layered on there? That'd be cool. Actually, no, it wouldn't. It'd be really gross. <laughs> Every message you're read, you're leaving in the chat is fucking incoherent. If you want to get a point out, Maggot, I'm very open to calling, okay? Um, I'm in the K-Hook Discord. If you want to just add me out of there, go ahead, okay? Oh! 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 True. Okay, I want you to find out. How would you rate Jessica Rat's YouTube? Reese, don't go! Don't go! I have a question for you. How would you rate Jessica Pizzle's wigs? Ooh. See, I could because we're still in a roast and I'm still feeling that attitude. She can do better. I can give her those wigs tips. She can come to Daddy's indulgence over here, and I will give her those fucking tips. Real, real. Oh, see, you know, Matt gets really uppity now that she's in bad standing with the community, you know? She wants to talk mad shit about Jessica Pizzle's wigs and all this other stuff. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, real, real. She could, she could, uh... She could totally, uh, you know, just put on. <laughs> it's so stupid. I can't even, bro. You know, she she's so ugly. She's so ugly. Maggot, you won't post a fucking picture without 30, 30 filters on. King TL legit mad because I turned him down in stream and still, still LOL. Backing up, you up are hilarious. Yeah, you know, Stardust. We're talking about Maggot edits. I I'm. You already heard me talk about Maggot edits, Stardust. So you know, I'm, I'm sure. You know, or I, I'll just give you a quick reminder. Dog pronouns, okay? It's it's dog pronouns. Retarded. You know, I it, th like thirty something year old woman uh, saying "ubu" online, acting super edgy. You know, just super. She's super cool, okay? Uh, she's super cool. That's that's the image Maggot wants to get across. Okay, now she's running. Yeah, now you know we have Stardust in the chat. We have Nicholas Diori in the chat. Now she's running away. She doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to talk. Okay. Maggot will not talk to me. She won't interact with me. It's just, she's only, she only talk, interact with me when she's having a fucking meltdown. For real, it's, yeah, I have a screenshot of her, uh, a Twitter bio. I think I do. Let me blow up my media tab. Like, this is a grown woman. Okay. That's just really the, point i want to get across is it in her discord bio yeah see here we have i mean look at how cool maggot is here guys look at how cool maggot edits aka yandere edits it's it's yeah exactly a cut above the rest consequences are heavy you bitches ready and 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 you know she's trying to play off the and and as if it's like some big meme. It's not a meme, okay? I mean, Maggot, can we please just be honest? You're embarrassing and you trying to play it off like this. It's embarrassing, okay? It's so fucking embarrassing. The consequences are heavy. What consequences, Maggot? What consequences are coming my way, Maggot Edits? I'm, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for the consequences. Lay it on me. Lay it on me, Maggot. I'll, I'm ready. And then, you know, Magnetar... Hits it right on the head here. Is she trying to play into it by doing the and and in bio twice? Because that's cringe. I mean, exactly. I mean, wow. It is just, holy fuck. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bean flick. Can we bring that emote back, Nicholas Diorio? Actually, that's my... That's my formal request, Nicholas Diorio. I want the the Stardust Bean Flick emote back, okay? That was a banger. You know it. I want you to bring it back. Oh, let's let's keep watching though. She's making a hard anime edit of you, Sailor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be like uh What's the bad guy in like Naruto or whatever? Yo, she's she's gonna be the badass, like fucking Sakura, fucking ninja girl, like, wah, 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 wah. and I'm gonna be like the, I don't, I don't fucking, I don't watch Naruto, okay? I'm not a pedophile, um, but. It's brutal. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen you on camera, too. I was quite shocked. 
Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. This took me an hour today, would you imagine? I, you know what? I really imagine. I don't know how hard it is. Uh, I do like... I mean, like, MAGA edits... It, it's just so crazy to me that MAGA edits has the gall, the fucking... The hubris to comment on other people's looks when she will... She absolutely refuses. She refuses to post a picture without a Snapchat filter on. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just so sad. Like... Cam up, maggot edits. Your your face is public. Why don't you cam up on any of these streams? Why don't you do a roast night, maggot edits? I mean, like seriously, what is what is going on? Oh yeah, you're in this other chat coping too. You know, going to talk shit. At the very least, you can do is address everything. I won't, Leah. Sorry. I mean, wow, you're so cool. Holy fuck! Can my PC stop doing this? Why does it? I'm gonna kill myself. Jesus fuck. Uh, wait, I need to find this too. This is just another embarrassing thing. This was her bio before she deleted her Twitter, by the way. Magpie, Naruto fanatic, you're 30. 30 years old, a fan of Naruto. How embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Okay, alright. Shit poster. <laughs> Clipper, yandere. I mean, yandere. Can we look? Can we look up the Urban Dictionary? What is? I think I know it's some weird shit, like weeb. Yandere, uh, ur, Urban Dictionary. Somebody who is sweet and kind at first glance. <laughs> but when it comes to the love, they will act aggressive and violent. Wait! I just put it all together. She's literally... This is just her with D-Max. Oh my god. How did I just realize this? She's just doing... This is just her and D-Max. She's just protective of her gay boyfriend, guys. It makes so much fucking sense. Never mind, guys. Call off the <laughs> call off the dogs. She's all she's all cleared. She's she's a yandere. Okay, it makes it makes so much sense. Metalhead, really? You're a metalhead. You're fucking thirty. It's embarrassing. You're thirty years old and you're a metalhead. Like, oh my god. It's it's. We already know how I feel about that. Co-host on Clear as Mud, Degenerate. Ooh, woo. Yeah, we all know you're Degenerate because you're online at 30 years old fucking <laughs> spurking out in, in discords and, and in uh, stream chats. We all know you're Degenerate. I mean, that's not a surprise to anybody. Is anybody super shocked? What's going on here, Magnetar? We just had a certified Maggot Spurg out moment, okay? Tune in next week. <laughs> we are bullying her tonight. Tune in next week for our next installment, okay? I'm going to be tracking any crevice of the internet where I see Maggot edits. I'm going to be there, okay? Any little little sector, okay? If I see her, her ass pop up, I'm fucking loading up the stream the same night and I'm talking about it. I don't actually think Naruto viewers are pedophiles. Maggot, however. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> that with the wig you're currently wearing though, it brings me a lot of like memories of my childhood, especially when like those memories of watching Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Holds a lot of power. My sir. That's awesome. Okay. 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 Oh, I love you. Darling, you're gonna keep me from cool again because of this fucking thing. Okay, no problem. Alright, we'll talk to you later, sir. Thank you. Alright, <laughs> thank you, Reese. Yeah, clap me for Reese. Yeah, that was awesome. Appreciate it. Alright, who's next? Is it was it Lamp or was it Pidgey? Speak up, maggot. Speak up, maggot. So I guess we'll do that then. Okay, let's do that. I'm doing up. Pidgey can crawl back. I mean, like honestly, you're such a loser. Badwick should have stopped. Like you're lucky Badwick is Canadian and nice. Okay, you're lucky he's such a he's such a good he's such a nice guy. Otherwise, he would have literally stomped you into the ground. Okay. Back in if he can. Yeah, that's right. If I was on this stream roasting Badwick, can you happen to pop in? Okay, it, K Huck might be banned right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, like, hey Lamp, what's going hey, on, man. dude? 
and just vibing. Today's been a pretty good day. Until, I know. Until now. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder how much of a uh, Bagwitch Pass content you guys went through because that just limits me to how much of my material left. Okay, come on. Man, we're a part of the, and come on, Lamp. Let's and stop the app. Oh, that's, like, that's not like that old, though. That's, yeah, that's not maybe two years ago. Yeah, it's from right around oh, no. Oh, no, Magnetar. She didn't leave the internet, okay? She is still active. In this Discord call right here, she's still actively posting on Discord. She's still actively in my chat. She's in many people's chats, in fact. Um, you know, I thought she was done with commentary. Here she is on a commentary stream. How fucking convenient. Am I right, guys? How convenient. You were making those videos, and I was like, man, these videos are great. Yeah, we're, we're pulling up, like, bus stop fucking vlogs and shit like that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, going back to the era of, like, the Rick Roll dance and uh, the cat video. There's the Barbie video as well. Those are, uh, those are old. Oh my god, the cat video is fucking amazing. Oh yeah! Uh, what, 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 oh yeah, that's right! What's yeah, yeah, you remember I posted that one. Hang on, I, oh. can, I can find that. Hang on, let me find it. Oh yeah, so I what, about that. You're supposed to come in here and sh I can find it. I can find it. No, you can't. You're retarded. Can't talk to me. Yeah, we know you can do it, Lamp. Come on now. We believe in you. Exactly. She she came crawling back to K-Huck, okay? She's not affiliated with commentary anymore, yet she's on k oh, stream. <laughs> that's weird. Oh god. Oh god. I thought you were done. I thought this oh, was when we were all toxic. Day. I thought we were all mean. Oh, yeah, you literally did like the tipster argument where you were like, oh my god, the community is full of all these bullies. They're so mean to me. Oh my god. And then you come immediately come crawling back. Exactly, Jessica. We were just talking about you and how she you know, she wants to come at your wig. She wants to, you know, call it like I'm like, ha, ah, true, Jessica's wigs are so ugly. She needs to work on them. Maggot, post a picture without a without a filter on, how about, huh? Post a picture without a filter on. Oh god, just the thought of it just makes you want to throw up. Ugh. It was just vomit, bathwater, and uh, alcohol. Oh, yeah. here we go. Here we and go. Hate. Here we go. Hate, hate particles, dude. Oh, hate. I thought you said fucking hate. I gotta, find the, I gotta find the one where he does like the fucking uh, interview thing. Which that one's one? really good. The one where you do like the audition, the cat audition. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. So I, I started to clean my channel up actually. So I See, I mean, this is a. I mean, sure, you can dunk on Badwick for this, but look. I mean, look at this video right oh, here. Respect, okay? No, fuck you, bitch. I'm not giving you fucking respect. Respect me first. Lick my fucking. We do we know what? Actually, we do know what Maggot looks like. Hold up. Play her intro when she starts up. True. Actually, yeah, I'll play this right now. Thank you, Abby. I forgot. I got sent this. Ladies and gentlemen, hold up. Oh fuck! How do I do this without leaking DMs? I don't want to be a dick. Oh, open. Yeah, okay. There we go. I'm retarded. Oh. Oh, my fucking god. About to get hacked. I just downloaded Hello Not Long. Yo, Maggot is in the chat. Let's say hello to Maggot Honestly, I'm a little misogynist myself. <laughs> Let's say hello to Maggot Edits, everyone. Woo! Oh, thank you, Abby. Thank you. Oh my goodness. This is such a banger video. We need to play that again. Can we play this at the beginning of every K Huck stream? Yo, Maggot is in the chat. Let's say hello to Maggot Honestly, I'm a little misogynist myself. <laughs> oh my god, dude. It is so it's just so good. It's so banger. Not the bull ring. Ex <laughs> I was making some ver not very nice tweets about the bull ring. Actually, it wasn't me. It was fucking. It was not me. Okay, it was Leia something who started it. Okay, it was Leia something who started it with this, and I just I couldn't help myself. But uh, yeah. I'm here for the the Donald Trump voice. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate that I know that Maggot Edits, you know, she, uh, she sleeps around quite a lot. She sleeps around quite a lot, but, uh, unfortunately she doesn't get, uh, she's not quite a dime piece, okay? She's not very appealing, she's not very appealing to the male gaze, okay? So, uh, what, what, what does a, a young, a young whore, such a, a young aspiring whore such as Maggot Edits do? She fucks gay guys, okay? Uh, she's so, she's so masculine, she's so ugly, she's so disgusting that the only men that will ever fuck her the only men that will ever even glance at her touch her even is uh d max the gay, the gay people right that's it's really unfortunate i know i'm so unfortunate i wish i had more pictures of maggot edits but trust me i was on her private twitter for a while and uh, on literally every single 
on literally every single like she would post like selfies, but she'd do like the gayest thing where she'd like sensitive content warning and like show like just to be like cool and edgy, I guess. Like where she'd put like the sens- the content warning on every selfie she posted. Kind of a self report that you think you're ugly as sin to the point where it has to be a content warning, right? I don't I have no idea how her and DMS got together. It's uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know, dude. Oh my god! I mean, just look at, oh man, it's just like when you're so ugly that the only people who will fuck you are gay guys, like, and you're such a whore that you'll, I I can only assume, like, I don't want to imagine what they're doing in bed, right? It has to be just absolutely diabolical, okay. Uh, whatever they get up to. I start to eat some of those videos. Bro, you, you're such an asshole. You better not delete those. Hey, I didn't know this was going to be a thing. I would have kept They're it. so good, though. You better not delete those. Meanwhile, she's nuked her entire Twitter to hide the absolutely embarrassing thing she's been doing, like this video right here. I mean, honestly, I don't know I don't know how she kept this up for so long. We should get together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Lower. Internet lower. Dude, what is with all your like videos like this being like five minutes? <laughs> That's it, Magnetar. You're flirting with people and other people's. You're flirting with people in the chats. I'm about to expose you, okay? You're about to be exposed, buddy. Eating is pretty pathetic to begin with. True. E- Dude, imagine not only are you e dating, you're e dating a gay guy. Oof. And you're doing dates over Fortnite. Fortnite date. Fortnite date night. Fortnite date night. Hey, everybody. Fortnite date night, me and <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Oh my god! Wait, I really hope I can find this. Hold on. God damn it! Can this not fucking kill itself right now? Please, bro. Okay. Fortnite date night. Hold <laughs> on right, here. I'll, I'll try to find it. So. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking anyway. I, I think if I send you a link before, you should still eat. Well, I can't get any links, I can't get any links. I know Bad Dog sent me a link before, but he sent it on Twitter, and uh, both of my Twitters are gone. You know what a Harlequin is? <laughs> this is, I don't know, I was just looking for this. Wait, hold up. <laughs> hold on, guys. Banger tweet incoming, okay? Banger tweet incoming. Oh, what the fuck, dude? Maggot Edits is literally fucking with me right now. <laughs> She's DDoSing my internet right now, guys. Banger tweet incoming. She was his fearless and she was fearless and crazier than him. She was his queen and God help anyone who dared to disrespect his queen. I swear there's an audio of this. God, I wish I had that. Maybe I can find it on YouTube. It is just, it's just so funny. <laughs> this picture. <laughs> it's, it's so much better too, because like, she has like the classic like e-girl skin on, right? She's like, like a cute little e-girl. Then D-Max is the fucking, he's the wolf. Okay. <laughs> he's the fucking wolf. Okay. He's here to protect her. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Why it's smeared a black brown substance on my face. You almost said black oh. there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you did a lot of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, this is for- oh my uh, god. Yeah. Are those ears made of construction paper and marker? And- oh my god. Probably. We need tips <laughs> for AI to read it. True. Dude, that'd be. <laughs> I think my 11 Labs subscription ran out, but. My favorite part of these ears is that one of them is way larger than the other. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I noticed that too. Oh, it's too funny. Catwick hears everything on the left side. Catwick. I love it. I love it. Uh, here, I think, I, think I-, you, I mean, you want to call him Catwick. What do we call you, Maggot? Dude, he is. Dude, D Max is literally a part of Camden Gerard's cult. How did we not realize this sooner? But I mean, do you want to call? Can we call D Max a D Wolf? I don't know. I don't fucking know. D Max Maggot looks like no, oh, dude. That is so true, Magnetar. Is she Maggot? Unironically, looks like someone who'd be friends with Spencer, right? Like. You look at all these people who were friends with Spencer back in the day, and they, they all have the same look to them. She she has that look, you know? <clears throat> Sorry. Jesus Christ. I buried them in, like, private videos. I can't find them on my phone. I'll have to go on the actual... Of course you did. 
What? I'm just like slowly getting rid of it. I said, ah! Uh, it looks like you just like smeared Nutella on your face. It's fucking good. Okay, guys. Nutella? Yes. It's Nutella. Nutella. Nutella, not Nutella. Well, I don't eat Nutella. Nutella. So I'm yeah, the dyslexic one. Yeah, you got rid of you got rid of a lot of your skit videos. I did, I, I, us of content. I said I was gonna slowly get rid of them. Over You're cucking us of content. Meanwhile, she deletes her whole fucking Twitter because she got criticized once. Wow. Why? But I mean, this is what I mean when I say, uh, if Badwick wasn't Canadian, okay, if Badwick wasn't so nice, wasn't Canadian, he would have nuked you out of orbit, okay. Badwick in this moment should have went, hey, wait a minute, you deleted your whole Twitter, you fucking whore, you dog bitch. What? That's what he should have done. Okay, well, well, you, you did have, have like... them to an archive channel. Yeah, it's one of my archive channel at the very least. Yeah, because Lord's Babbitt Lord. One sec. Archive channel at least. Archive channel at least. Why don't you fucking archive your, your Twitter, bitch? The fuck? And you know, we all know she's not gone off Twitter, okay? We all know she's on some sock account, furiously defending herself in people's comments, okay? We all know that's happening because people like Maggot just can't stay away from the internet, okay? It's too addictive to them. It's too fucking... It, like, it's, it means too much for the... Uh, it means too much, Okay. That's the joy of it. It's gone now. Not everybody has interesting lore, but Babbitt certainly does. True. I mean, not just... Everybody has interesting... I thought uh, Maggot has interesting lore. I've been thinking about reaching out to uh, Papa Gut, because that's where she originally came from. Little known fact. Uh, Maggot Edits originally came from the Papa Gut community. I mean, wow. I'm sure he has a few stories about Maggot. I mean, surely. <laughs> you called me soft and sus, but I didn't know my entire existence. True. <laughs> Imagine calling anyone else soft when you nuked your entire, your, both your private and public Twitter because you're public. I mean, it was embarrassing. It just, you kept removing people constantly and it kept getting leaked over and over and over and over and over again. How embarrassing. How just, like, wow. Is this what it was like when the Nazis burnt all those books? Yes. This is exactly the, the library of Alexandria exactly getting burned. Wait, can you look up private? You're a monster. No, like, if you probably just didn't, kind of like watch them. No, but I mean, like, oh God, how can I find those? I don't know. I'm gonna be a very attentive K-Hook viewer in these upcoming months. You can unlist it. You can unlist it and send the K-Hook a link, and then it'll only be accessed. But she can only get it through that link. Yeah. Just not like other people will be able to get it. She opts around quite a lot, huh? Quite unfortunate. Yeah, you know, it really makes you wonder, right? Because Papa Gut, someone who's known for uh, being in a poly polyamorous relationship, uh, sexting multiple women, and uh, you know what? Hmm, let's let's think back at some of Maggot's past controversies, right? Let's let me think. Um oh yeah. Sext and ghosty, E dating D Max. I'm sure she's sexted other people. Um so is it that much of a stretch to say that maybe Papa Gut I mean she cause she you know, she fucking hates Papa Gut right now, right? If you go to my interview that I had on K-Hux channel with Maggot there, you know, she has a little rant about Papa Gut where she goes into how much she hates him and all this other blah 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 blah. I wonder if there's some lore there that we don't know about, huh? I mean, it, it just makes you think, you know, Maggot has this history of sexting all these people, getting into these online relationships. So does Papa Gut. She was a part of his community. Now all of a sudden they hate each other. Hmm. You have a good night too, Magnetar. You have a good night too. Ghosty the Impaler. <laughs> so that's about all no, I have to find them because really I private them, but um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to search them and I just uh, actually don't know where they are. Not that I hid them. Well, I mean, I showed them around for a while, but you know what's interesting about the compare you know the comparison between past Badwick and now Badwick? <laughs> past Badwick didn't misspell words in the titles. The Trotten and the Stormy Skeleton debated. You put Frosty Skeleton in the title. <laughs> She's out here sexing people and content creators, but I can't be in a porn stream chat. So true. So true, Magnetar. You know, it's a, it's completely fine to her be to her, you know, be sexting Ghosty to her for her to be sexting all these other people. But Mag, the second Magnetar is in Bunny Stream Chat. God forbid, dude. God fucking forbid. I mean, that's just another amazing point by Magnetar. Wow. Wow. I I, I would reach out to Papa Gut, but I don't I don't know how to get in his Discord. <laughs> I don't know how to get into his Discord to be honest. Did you? Oh, <laughs> Then there's, the, then there's the TCR Plague Moth interview we did last year. I think that one still has uh, the creepy reader there instead of saying that creepy reader. Oh, that's funny. Someone, someone, so when people like Lanza make their Plague Moth videos, that shit gets lost in the shuffle and no one ever finds it when they do research. Oh. Okay, let's see. Looking for that real quick. Uh, tip sir, number one Keffel stand. Reese is a 10 out of 10, would be an IRL friend and, uh, would be IRL friends and hold hands. Yes, very, very true. Her beloved bunny, before, exactly. Oh, sorry, for 420. Thank you, tip sir, number one Keffel stand. Appreciate it. Thank you. And that is very, very true. I'd be besties with Reese, too, in real life. 100%. Yep. 
Okay, I'm, I'm in the story time era videos right now, so it should be coming up relatively. By the way, I'm not doing this gay, like, guilt by association shit, okay? I still like K-Huck. K-Huck is a cool person, okay? I still like Lamp. I still like Badwick. I don't give a fuck that they're still chill with Maggot, okay? I'm just making the point here that I'm not chill with Maggot at all, and I want her gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm in the gym yeah, just talking politics random BS 90% of the time. I mean, yeah, it's just it's just nothing. You don't have to even defend yourself on that. Even if you were in there like fucking Okay, I I wouldn't defend you in there being a weirdo, okay? But even if like it just doesn't matter. It's just she it's obvious she had a fucking vendetta, okay? So you do like the Tana Mojo, Mojo style of like a like a I've done everything. where it's just like I got assaulted with a toothbrush. I've, I've done everything, bro. I uh, I've been on this platform for a very long time. Uh. That is very true. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. We should be getting into one pretty soon. Whether it be the cat video first. Oh, there's the one trying to touch a Canadian goose. Um, oh, God. <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to pull this up. I want to see that one. I want to see that one. By the touch of laughs, we have to get that I, one. I'm going to be honest. I think it's pretty anticlimactic. But, you know, I'll get a shareable link. And then, who should I send it to? Let's see. Uh, here, K-Hawk? Yeah, thank you. Leia said Maggot snitching on Mag for being in her chat could mess with her income. And I didn't think of that. Oh, I'll mess with her him come how? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, what he means is like, if Maggot was like snitching on you for being in Bunny's chat, then potentially, uh, I don't know, people could like see that and like, oh, maybe I don't want to be in her chat because Maggot's going to call me out or something like that and it would mess with Bunny's stream. I think that was the logic people used, but uh, yeah. Can I go? Oh, no, not that one, not that one. Uh, I don't know why I did that here. We're good. No, that, that's not the... Oh, wait, is that what I... Oh, no. We should be trying to touch a Canadian goose. Good night, Magnetar. Yeah, that's not it. No, that's not it. Okay. Sorry, guys. Give us just a minute. Okay, can you... Can you? It's a second link. Can you see the second link? Okay. I will unprivate it. And I'll, I'll... That's hilarious. Because I have no idea. Okay, link to that one. Oh, God, that is horrible. Like, <laughs> running away from you. That's exactly what I tried to... Uh... <laughs> I didn't want to spook him. Oh, God, that is horrible. Like, instantly all start running away from you. <laughs> Maggot, you act like you are a total freak. Like, every time Maggot goes out in public, do you think that, like... She's getting looked at normal? No, because she's a total, a total freak, right? A MAGA goes out in public, children start running away. MAGA goes out in public, people are staring at her. I mean, Maggot probably doesn't even notice at this point because it happens so often, right? People are staring at her. People are giving her the side eye. People are, you know, like, what the, what is up with this fucking crackhead bitch? And like, you know, why is she walking around like that? Uh, why does she look so weird? Why is she like... Uh, why, like, why is she like this? Like, you know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense for a 30 year old woman to be acting like this. And, uh, you know, like she's legitimately, she goes to a park. She probably gets puts on. Okay. I, never mind. I need to stop. <laughs> no one wants to be your friends. <laughs> hey, let's see. And what's the other one? The Barbie one? Ah, uh, you're funny. Okay. Let's I got in trouble for that because I wore uh, Kaylee's pants. You need everyone. Ah, okay. I, I, oh I my God. Remember. This was four years ago? I thought it wasn't that long ago. Okay, I guess mm -hmm. not. Go to show how much I pay attention. Okay. All right, hold on. Give me a second. Make sure I'm showing the rest of the class, which I'm not. There we go. Okay, here we go. This is the Catwick dance, guys. You ready? You might you <laughs> might get copy striked on this one. Just a heads up. Should I mute it? No, the multi like defeats the purpose of it. Oh, okay. I think this is the one you're just singing in this one, right? Yeah, maybe. I just don't want anything bad to happen to it. Oh, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, and welcome to Badwick Productions, a short skit of Catwick. Maggot now, just doesn't like this song because it's not a it's not it's not a metal song, right? It's not. She's a metalhead, okay? She's a really cool and edgy metalhead. Like, uh, you know, she only likes real music, like, from Korn, Slipknot, and you know, all these other cool, edgy bands, okay? She's she's really cool and edgy. Uh, so that's why she doesn't care for this song very uh, all, all too much. Let me give you a little bit of backstory on why I'm dressed the way I am and why. Not to copy thinking, like most of you YouTubers. Oh, yeah, that's true. How yeah. can I go back? Was, how can I do? Did I do? I took that. Some of the most popular fans find all of them, and it's cycling through this. Now, and I don't want to alarm you <laughs> why I'm dressed this way. <laughs> but I can tell you. I'm going to stay and watch. And I hope you tell your friends about this. Now, thank okay. you. Okay. Enjoy. Okay. Cats. I'm a kitty cat. And I dance, 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 dance. I'm a kitty cat. And I dance, 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 we're destroying maggot edits, weird caller guy. That's what you missed, okay? Get in. <laughs> Get in the... I don't know. The, the bus me or whatever. Oh my god, this is amazing. Oh my god. What else was it supposed to think? <laughs> You need, to go back. you need to go back to this phase, I think. I think you need to go back to this. I think it's great. Right? Just go back to the... To Maggot, I think you need to go back to the phase where, you know, you were online embarrassing yourself, right? 
I think you need to go back to the phase where you were online being edgy and cool. I think that'd be like that's what you need to do, Maggot. I think you need to go back to that phase. These days, life is simpler. <laughs> not caring about anything. I mean, true. No, yeah. I'm not uh, not getting involved in drama. Oh, no. not caring about anything. Hold on, Maggot edits reference. Hold on. Wait, fuck. No, it wasn't here. It was here. <sighs> I don't like anyone. LOL. Maggot edits reference. Maggot edits reference, guys. She. Not caring about anything, Magnetic's reference. It was a simpler time. Zero to an ACR. PG, oh my god! <laughs> oh no. Oh. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> this, this right here. No, this this is way worse. Because like, right. this is nothing in comparison. This is like, this, 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 is, this is what got me for that. This, this right here. No, this, this is wild. This is like, this is nothing in comparison. This is like, this is nothing compared to that. Like, discussing moldy hot tub is arguably way worse. Way worse. True, I agree. Maggot. Everything about you is disgusting and moldy. <laughs> That's gonna get stuck in my head. Now, <laughs> it, is, it does. It wasn't stuck in your head. It reminds me of that song. What is that song? Is it from? Is it, no, I think there's another one. Um. That dance song, you know, that we can dance if we want to. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 reminds me of that one, yeah, it reminds me of that one. I'm well aware of that song. Yeah, that's a good one. You go to sleep at night, and you wake up in the middle of the night, and you have sleep paralysis, and you sleep what? paralysis, and you just bad wigs. <laughs> <laughs> so funny enough, actually, funny enough, I actually saw a true fan of me because of this uh, video, where you're like, oh, like, someone read. All right. Well, you know what? It, we're going through the archive, though. It's a yeah, so let's watch tonight. Is that like it's biased? Wait just a few minutes, and then I'll- Dancing, there, there's dance that one made of me. Everything from like- That is really good. Yeah, that, that is beautiful. That is actually really, really neat. That's actually pretty cool. I, I gotta admit, that's pretty cute. Yeah, I want to- Okay. <laughs> I was about to hate guys, but I stopped myself. Okay, I'm. Ugh, hold me back. <laughs> I'm gonna get banned if you guys don't stop me. <laughs> you send Yes. Okay. I sure will. Okay. Well, send right, me let's... the cat video. Yes. Send me both. Okay. We'll do. Okay. All right. Let's watch this here. Here we go. Okay. Here we go, guys. Dude, why did Badwick get rid of this intro? This is banger as fuck. I'm a intro. Wow. <laughs> oh, Tim's in chat. Jesus. <laughs> oh, hi, Tim. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Tim. I think it's the first year. Look, Tim. One of the first few times you've been here? You might have been here before when we first talked to him, possibly. Oh, God. What on earth? Badwick? Super filtered photos do mean you smell, uh, you smell moldy, okay? <sighs> What? That is Kaylee. Those are 100% Kaylee's pants. Ow! Ow! That, that was her shirt and her pants. Ow! Ow! Yeah. I'm even better right now, okay? You're not even singing the song right. <laughs> You're not even not thinking right. <laughs> Epic fail, dude. Epic fail. Come on now. And you have to go do it. Like, if you're, you're going to say I did shitty in this, you have to do better. Uh, try me. Otherwise, I will do it. I will do it. Don't, don't. Oh, he would do so it. So true, Maggot. Get on, get on camera like this and dance. In fact, Maggot, post a full body selfie. I think, uh, you know, it's weird in all these selfies I see of Maggot, there's, it's always just her face with a Snapchat filter, and it's like from a weird angle, she's like, taking it like that, so you really can't see anything, right? Uh, you really can't see anything, you can't tell really what's going on, I mean, that's how you know she really smells moldy, okay, it's because, I, I, I would just like to challenge Maggot to do literally, just take a picture from this angle without a filter on, right? He totally would. Okay, wait, wait, no. This is ironic. This is ironic. I want you. I want. I want to know what you guys think the lyrics are for this song. Okay, play, 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 play. Life is fantastic. It's fantastic. Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. This was yeah. very much not appropriate for me to be listening to when it came out. I had no business listening to the song when I was a kid. Yeah, exactly. That was more famous than like Capoeira or some shit like. that. <laughs> <laughs> Work it bad way. Work it bad way. <laughs> I'll start clicking loonies and like, No, no, no. Apparently, she actually says blonde bimbo, and I never knew this until oh, yesterday. Wait, really? really? She says blonde, yes, she's blonde yeah, no, bimbo actually, girl in a fantasy yes, world. Yes, yes, she says bimbo, and I never knew that. Hold up, wait, hold up. I just realized. Age check. Maggot edits just said she listened to this song as a kid. What is this song called? A uh, Barbie girl in a Barbie world. This song was released in 1997. How old do you... So, let's say... Maga Edit said she was listening to this song at 12 years old. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're about... <laughs> Maggot Edit said... She, okay. 
Okay, Maggot Edits is listening to this song at 12 years old, okay? Can I? Here we have, okay. So she is 12, okay? 12. And then the song released in 1997. So that, what? That's three years plus 24, so that's 27. So plus 27. Confirmed age, 39. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Magnus is confirmed to be four, almost encroaching on 40 years old. I mean, it's uh, the song Barbie Girl in a Barbie World was released in 1997. She said she listened to it when she was 12, meaning that in current day, she is 39. How unfortunate. I mean, can we get a replay? What a self-report. Isn't like that mean? Like into any position or some shit like that? No, no, no. Apparently she actually says blonde bimbo. And I never knew this until oh, yesterday. Wait, really? She says blonde, yes, I'm blonde yeah, no, she actually, bimbo girl in a fantasy yes, world. Yes, yes, she says bimbo. And I never knew that. No, you never no. used to read the, the, the pamphlets that came with the CDs? I don't no, like, know. I, I, I just don't remember that. I don't remember that. This is why I can't remember anything else. It's because my, my mind is full of song lyrics. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, true. How yeah, unfortunate. I cared about song lyrics, to be fair. Oh, okay, well. Okay, we'll watch a few minutes of this. Cancel Aqua. No, we're not canceling. No. Go with your. Where you look like you don't know a single one of the words no, to the song. No, no, you are completely lost. lost. You are completely lost. I love it. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. Maggot, All right, Lample, what you got? You were typing gibberish in my chat earlier, okay? You have no, absolutely no room to talk about uh, not knowing stuff, okay? You're a, you're actually retarded. She said I was old enough to be her father, so I'd <laughs> so I would have been nine. Damn. You know, Maggie, yeah, that's weird. Weird call. Like, she wants to call other people old while being 39? Hmm, that's weird. I forgot what there, sir. All, all I gotta say about that video is, that's tits, bro. <laughs> real, real. <laughs> real exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I lost my nuts. Oh, that's that great. I had to reach into the bag to hit bad with a few because, I mean, I love bad and hard for me to roast him, but. <laughs> <laughs> true, but, true. Oh, there's lots of roasting. I'll pull it out of the bag since, you know, since this is the occasion, you know, for roasting. But I hope y'all have a fantastic 29 year old day. woman on the internet saying, ooh, ooh. Wow. wow. Thank you, Leah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, Lamp. No, lamp, 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 yes. All right, so we've got an exclusive, guys. This is, I think this is the first time they've ever called in. We've got Xylee Gets Biased. Mm. This is the first, I think. Hey. So here we go. Hello, Xylee Gets Biased. Hello? You're muted. I mean, Dang it. It's pretty great. Are you there? I mean, you had their appearance. True. Try exiting out. Super it's pretty great. Okay, all right. He's, they're going to try to come back. Okay, let's see. Let's see if they come back. I know. I'm getting, I'm getting sad, too. I want to hear him. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Here we go again. All right. Xylee Gets Biased. Take two. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Oh my god, it's not Matt Pitt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what the profile yeah. is. No, no, they said oh! it was like forever ago, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's a uh, Keone, I think is his name? Or yeah, yeah, that's what the profile is. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Zylie gets biased? Are you there, sir? R.I.P. No! What? Is that, is that your new couch? Is that your new couch, Bradwick? Yeah, like it's not new. Are you it's seriously new. just chilling on a couch on stream? Do you guys think Megan Edits has ever owned a new couch? Do you think she's ever bought a new couch? I mean, she's been alive. <laughs> In 40 years of living, do you guys think Maggot Edits has ever saved up enough money to buy a new couch? Hmm. Then again, you know, when Maggot Edits was was younger, I'm, a couch has costed significantly less. So give benefit of the doubt, she probably owns at least a couch. But uh, what is that? Like uh, 60, <laughs> 60 years old at this point? <laughs> this is my new meta. This is the new meta. For me now. I'm a dip. I'm a dip. I just want to come in and say hi. I'm not gonna roast bad because I love him. So, but hi, oh, hello, okay. goodbye. Okay. I'll, I'll miss your, your 16 year old teenage energy. What the fuck does that even mean? I hate you. <laughs> I have to disagree with that. With there, she doesn't have 16 year old teenage energy. She has 40 year old decrepit eggless energy. Okay, that's what she has. It really, it's just unfortunate. Unfortunate maggot decided to go down this path uh, of just nuking herself out of the community. Because now I'm going to be watching, okay? I'm watching. <laughs> I'm off the pier, okay? I'm off the... Uh, I don't think she has a job. True. She probably just siphons money from gay... <laughs> from gay people that she e-dates online. That's probably what happens. But uh, that's another thing, too. I forgot. Papa Gut. I'm pretty sure he's also bisexual. So, that like, this is literally so in line with the maggot lore, Okay. You know, first there's Ghosty, who, I mean, just listen to the inflection in his voice. It's very obvious that he's not uh, the straightest knife in the drawer. <laughs> I don't fucking... 
You know, and then he moves on to D Max, who you know, ob- who is also even gayer than Ghosty. It just makes sense that uh, you know her and her and Papa Gut may have got it going on. Okay, I mean, wow, wow. Can we just like moment of silence? Moment of silence, guys. R.I.P. to a fallen, a fallen. It's it. Fallen dog girl. <laughs> dog person. Back at edits. <laughs> I mean, can we play her out one more time? Hold up. Wait. Fuck, I shouldn't have closed that. What? Fuck. No, it's in my downloads. Never mind. I'm stupid. God, it thinks this is like a virus. Yo, Maggot Edits is in the chat. Let's say hello to Maggot Edits. Honestly, I'm a little misogynist myself. I mean, wow. I mean, you love to see it, guys. R.I.P. Maggot Edits. Shit, guys. I think that's kind of it for Maggot Edits, though. Unfortunately, we're out of mag tent. I mean, we literally got an hour of content out of Maggot. Isn't that fucking beautiful, guys? We got an hour of mag tent just from her spurging the fuck out in random comment sections on this stream. <laughs> her couch from the casting video. True. I mean, the only thing left to watch. I mean, I guess we could skim through this D Max. D Max H S. I mean, do you guys want to watch their E date? I feel like going into Discord and making annoying sounds. Uh, well, if you do that, you won't be doing it for too long. You'll be doing it for as long as I think it's funny, and then after that, you won't be doing it. So, sounds like a party. Oh. I like that you know Where's my dad who's your dad in Fortnite. Let's go. Let's just go. I think that. Yes. I like that. I mean, there's that. There's oh, that's like, that. Wait. Nice story. Not that I dislike Jason Momoa. It's just I don't know. It's like, it's like when everybody looks like when everybody looks like Maui from uh, 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 Moana. I'm just questioning life. You know what I mean? That's how people look IRL. There's that, there's that Super Bowl ad where Jason Momoa takes off his like his muscle suit. Everybody knows that's the real Jason Momoa. That was that was an ad, guys. That wasn't fantasy. That was just fact. That was real. Imagine being a fan cam for yourself, exactly. The max mom. I can't believe you just shit talk Maui like that. It's crazy. Well, I didn't know that you had any reference for Maui. You really like you respect Maui that much? Really funny. Yeah. How, dude? We're seeing it happen. We're seeing it happen in real time. We're. <laughs> She's pussy whipping him in real. Look at Max. Look at D Max. Oh my god, I hate fucking YouTube. I mean, look at D Max. He said one bad thing about Jason Momoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said one bad thing about Jason Momoa, and this is the f- and Maggot immediately jumps on him. Maggot is immediately pulling out the whip, whoosh, 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 back in line, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> I mean, you already know that if Jason Momoa decide for whatever reason decided to stoop that low and even talk to Maggot Edits, she would be, she would immediately dump D-Max and call him like a rapist or something, you know? He's an asshole. I mean, like, who says you're welcome without anybody ever saying Exactly. Exactly, that's why he's based. So you, you think he's based because he's an asshole? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, that he's based in itself. Says, yeah, well, yeah. Says, <laughs> says, I think he's based because he's an asshole. It's, I mean, it's weird you would say this one day ago when you were streaming, but you know, suddenly it's not cool when your, your buddy assistant sailor over here is, it's not based when I'm an asshole. Because I'm an asshole to you. See, that's how it works. Oh, it's so funny when people are assholes. I love saying the F slur online. I love being so edgy. I love being such a little... I love being an ubu girl online, even though I'm almost 40. Hmm. <sighs> Except for when people do it to me. A lot about all parties involved. You raped. <laughs> I mean... It's time! So, okay. Don't worry about it, we're pasta. Just, just go with it. It's yes and, okay? That's the rule. All right, let's go to the blue marker when we get an opportunity. Maybe. I'll maybe go there. Oh look, it's a green car. The car was always green the whole See, time. She's literally pussy whipping him. Oh, maybe go there. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, she's such a bitch. How did, like, look how sad D-Max is right now. I feel, this is making me feel bad for D-Max, guys. I mean, I don't know how about you guys, but look at how fucking sad he is listening to Maggot fucking just back in line, boy. Whoosh. Whoosh. Like, you, you know what, uh, what Blossom thought that Nicholas Diorio was doing to her? That's what I, that's what's happening to D Max right now. Look how look how this is supposed to be Fortnite fun. D Max isn't having fun. He's being he's being whipped in line. It was not. It wasn't. It wasn't actually. It was green. You don't know. You were like all the way over there. What do you mean I can't, 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 can't do that? What do you mean I can't do that? I literally can't. can't I literally can't do that. That's like no. Wait, wait, no. Fuck. You can't do that, D Max. Whoosh. Hey, actually, <laughs> I have a really good bit. Hold on. 
Hold on, guys. Sorry. Dead air, dead air, dead air. Back to work. No breaks. Agree with all my opinions. I mean, oh, my goodness. How sad. I'm fine. Gaslighting. Fair enough. Gaslighting? Oh, no, that's, that's actually, well, was actually, she was the one who was gaslighting. And, and. So, to be no. fair. No, 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 no. The, the pink car was already, already there. It was always there. Which pink car? And where was it? And how was there so many pink cars in all the places that you say that there were? Can't prove anything. Cannot prove anything. Literally getting denied. Literally, literally, it's like, it's like, it's like you're, you're like a salad. standing up for himself. Oh my god. Commander, I'm like Destiny, okay? This debate's not going to go for you. No e-pussy for, no e-pussy for D-Max tonight. I've never been so hard before. You're seething. Amazing. Oh good, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it, Agent Malclip Yazzle. I like your name, I like your name. There's many words to it. There's also a, hey, there's a train here. Do we want to do that? I'm cool with that. Let's do that, let's get on the train. Trains are cool. We have an autism chat that they'll appreciate the trains, right? Fuck yeah. Autism, rise up. Rise up. I, I'm just, well, self included. You know? I'm not like a scholar or anything, okay, but it there, just makes me feel like Is it. Maggot still on the E date uh, two hours in? Yeah, twist that around, Maggot. Do it. I dare you. I don't have friends. There you go. Oh, okay. Well. Ooh, there we go. She, she's just so cool, guys. She doesn't even have friends. She's just so edgy and cool. She doesn't even have friends. You have friends you have it's Fortnite, guys. Look, it's Fortnite. It's, uh -huh, it's everybody uh -huh. emailing yeah, in Fortnite. I don't have that either. I don't Can I do it too? I wonder. I actually just don't like people. Well, that's fair. <laughs> Dude, she's so edgy and cool. She just doesn't like people. Wow. I mean, you get the point. You can literally skip to any at any point in this live stream and you just see her completely embarrassing herself on something on a, on a totally new topic, right? I don't have friends. I'm, I'm a lone wolf. I, I, <laughs> um, it can be a little much sometimes. Wow. Damage to I'm, Isn't I'm this so wholesome, guys? Fortnite E-Day. He is uh, busy dancing like a slur that I'm not allowed to say anymore. So. I, I was not ignoring anything. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know what you were doing. Yeah, see, that's what I mean when I say like she likes to be all cool about it. She's like, a slur I can't say. D-Max is dancing on a slur I can't say. Just say F-slur, dude. Oh my god. Anyways, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little, I'm a little burnt out on Mag Tent. Okay, it's, it's unfortunate. I know. But we've kind of we've kind of milked the cow dry for now at least, okay? Don't you guys worry. I'm gonna be watching D Max live streams very intently. I'm gonna be watching Maggot live streams very intently. I'm gonna be I'll, I'll be watching out for you guys, okay? I'll be collecting the mag tent. I'll be harvesting the mag tent like the true lol cow. <laughs> Dude, they need Maggot on the lol cow podcast, okay? No white boy swag detected. So true. So true. Okay. I know it sucks, fellers, but uh, we're going to have to cover mainstream drama now, okay? No more mag tent. No more mag tent for y'all. George not found. Oh, God. I don't even know if I want to cover this. It's so much. It's such, it's like a, a hill to climb covering George not found. But we're going to do it, okay? I'm going to be doing it for you guys. We're going to be going over the entire story from start to finish. The entire thing, okay? So I have... You're right, Iron, for real, for real. So we're going to be going through her original video, his response, Dream's response, the leaked Discord logs, her response again, George's response again, that fucking soy guy who had, like, the pronoun style rant. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dream's Twitter space meltdown, and then finally, the newest George response. <sighs> so, uh, I mean, there's no real reason to stall. We're going to be watching this all... Uh, I did not mean to do that. We're going to be watching this all a little faster. Not too fast, though. Just because I need time, okay, guys? I need time to process all the information. All these... Uh, all these super serious allegations. I, I totally understand. I'd be Blackbird. Uh, I realize a lot of you guys have probably already seen all this stuff, but I just... I want to do, like, kind of a cohesive stream from start to finish, starting with the Kate Bugs and ending in the newest stuff, okay? Then I'm going to make a video out of it. So if you guys have already seen this, obviously, feel free to leave. Or if you, I don't, I don't know, I can't keep. <laughs> Shout out to this like random Minecraft YouTuber, by the way, for uploading all the responses in like a, a very cohesive manner. He's the goat. The goat. Good night, weird caller guy. Thank you for sticking around. Okay, obviously I should have. I'm a tag. Okay, we're going to skip past the intro. Um. Oh, God. <laughs> See, I've already, I've only ever, I've only, <laughs> I've only ever, I haven't even, 
reacted like we only got through the intro so far and she's already fucking crying oh my god funny enough i wrote i wrote it down because thank I you think, King <laughs> i tried my best you know. i wouldn't have anything to say it's a lot of work to run someone off the internet okay you know i thought i'd freeze up <laughs> when i went live which i kind of have but i didn't think i'd cry um i wrote down what i want to say on stream today i hope that's okay um because i get really anxious when talking about important things um and i don't want to miss say anything and i want i don't want to miss anything by the way i'm pretty sure she takes back multiple things she says within the stream so a little 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 uh teaser right there okay guys a little teaser to make sure that i'm saying everything i want to <laughs> and in order to do that i wrote it down last night um because i knew i would be like this um and i knew i wouldn't be able to talk properly so Dude, we're not even. She's already. What they call it, ulting. She she's using her ultimate right now, guys. <laughs> her ultimate ability. I probably won't. I again apologize. I probably won't look up um during the stream. I'll be reading on my phone. Um, but I wanted to read this instead of tweet it because I wanted it to come from me, and I want you guys to hear it from me. Good night, Iron Duck. It's really hard for me to talk about, but I feel like it's important. For other people to hear it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so poisoned against this poor girl. I'm fucking. I'm. I'm, I'm like evil. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so the well has been so poisoned against this girl because I'm I already know the end of the story. Okay. Because I'm reacting this late. Okay. That's the that like that's just the reality of this. I'm. If I was watching this for the first time, I didn't know anything. I'd probably be a little nicer. Okay. But I already. I already know what's gonna happen, okay, guys. I'm, I'm, it's like watching the Avengers, but I'm already spoiled. Okay, I'm gonna start reading. Shit, my I look a fucking mess. You are a fucking mess. Woo. Um. Okay. Wait, we're gonna speed I this up. I want to start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. I was ready to disappear with a secret forever. I never knew that creators were allowed to talk about these kinds of things. And I guess I'm By the way, she completely destroyed Shelby <laughs> because now nobody is talking about Wilbur's suit and the supposed abuse. Like, I, I'm literally stealing this talk away from Nick, but it's so fucking true. Nobody's talking about the abuse that Wilbur's suit supposedly, like, bit into... <laughs> he bit into Shelby, right? Uh, now it's just all about this girl and George not found, right? She literally stole all of Shelby's thunder for nothing, right? And she's like, oh, thank you, Shelby. Mm. Well, you really fucked her over, so congratulations. I'm still new to it all. Oh, and are we seeing this here, guys? Septum piercing. Starting to see a little trend. Uh, maggot to uh, Kate, K Katie bugs. Brave enough, and I still don't. But her strength made me feel like it may be okay. A little while ago, my of story course, was almost unique without me knowing. So here it is on my terms. Here's my story. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. Significantly older. And had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. Freshly 18. By the way, that's a lie. Like like I said, I've already spoiled all this. But she was six months into being 18. Okay, that is not freshly 18. You're 50% of the way done. You've already been, you've been 18 for six months. Okay, you're an adult. Calm down. I will admit, like, 26 and 18 is a little weird, right? Like, if, if one of my, if somebody I knew in real life said, like, oh, yeah, I'm 26 dating an 18-year-old, they'd be like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's that's just like weird but i don't think like it's not like illegal in any way it's just like weird okay i was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened he was someone i had once watched and he was eight years older than me and far more powerful far more powerful wow uh, this is something that i've heard people like the, the first person i think who i heard say this was papa guy and it is just so true and it holds true to this day that the existence of a power dynamic doesn't mean there's inherently an abuse of a power dynamic, okay? Just because one person is older, richer, or whatever other power dynamic, stronger, right? Because literally in every single relationship, someone is older, someone is richer, someone is stronger, right? And you can't do like power scaling to figure out if the relationship is abusive or not. You have to see if there's an – if somebody's exploiting those, okay? So if like your boyfriend's like, oh, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you if you don't do this for me, then that's an abuse of the power imbalance because he's stronger than you, right? Like, it's just such a simple concept. Just because he is older, just because he is more influ influ influential, doesn't mean inherently that he's abusing his power dynamic. The only re instance where the, the power dynamic is so great that there is an inherent abuse of it is in like 
is if you're under 18, right? Like if you're under 18, we assume that you're so retarded, you can't make your own decision sexually. So that, that like the power dynamic, it, it's just, it, you know, we dismiss that away from society, right? Oh my goodness. The crying is insufferable. I'm so proud of you and your bravery. Proud. Hashtag proud. The full story is quite short. It was at a convention in a hotel room. It was my first convention I was invited to, so I stuck by one of my best friends the entire time. I was nervous but excited about it all and felt really grown up. One night we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me exactly. and my best friend. Freshly 18 and pedo jacket, 2024 top contradiction. And her other friend. <laughs> this other friend was romantically talking to a really big creator at the time. He was also the best friend of my soon-to-be assaulter. She wanted to go back to his hotel room but didn't want to go alone, so we went with her. I didn't really mind as I was up for anything. When we got to the hotel room, it was the creator, the girl- I didn't really mind. Mm. You didn't really mind? Really? Are you sure you weren't biting at the bit to go and, and meet these big influential people? The girl was talking to and his best friend. The two of them and the three of us. Not much happened that first night, just some drinking and talking at a table. The guy's friend had been passing flirts at me the entire night, but because he was the oldest in the room, we assumed he didn't know my age. Later that night, when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him. I mean, like, who cares if he didn't- if he knew your age or not? The age is completely irrelevant because you're 18! Now, if what you were alleging that George Not Found is like a, a kind of a weird guy, he's kind of a, a he's just kind of weird and gross, then like sure, th that's a fair point, I guess. But you're not alleging that, are you? You're alleging that he fucking assaulted and raped you. And in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. A few days passed when I found myself in the same situation. Us three were at party when it got boring, and whether the girl wanted to leave and go to his room, or he asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. I was naive, and so we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby. <laughs> On the way, they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling, like they could sense something was wrong. And I wonder what would have happened if I had picked up on it, and if I wasn't drunk and if I didn't wave it off. But I don't want to dwell on what ifs. That night, I went up to his room, back at the hotel room again, where the two friends and us three girls. Oh my god. At the, time, at the time, all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games, and already drunk, I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch, and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. I confused my nerves first. I mean, who cares, dude? You're 18 and you're, you made the conscious decision to go to a drinking party with older men. You could have left at any moment, okay? Like, I'm sorry. Oh my god. They're not even like, see, okay, it's whatever, dude. It's not like you're on fucking Epstein's Island right now, okay? That's the point I'm making. It's just completely embarrassing. I've never been around such a big creator before. I remember getting drunker and drunker and really tired around this time. It was about 3 a.m. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex. And I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. I remember back now to him answering questions. Right? Um, yeah, so like, I'm 18 and I'm a virgin. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I mean, it's just so obvious, man. It's so fucking obvious that this person wanted attention from the big YouTubers in the room. <coughs> and when she got it, she freaked the fuck out and regretted it, right? Like, that is, it's just so obvious to me. The game about back when he was 19 and when he was in college, noticing how my future was his past. And I wondered how he felt sitting so close to me. It was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people, the fact that everyone else was sitting around us <laughs> watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. I was scared and I felt sick, either from my alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. No. He... <laughs> He raped her in broad daylight, bro. <laughs> Literally everyone was watching and he just started fucking go <laughs> assaulting her right there, dude. <laughs> no cooperating stories, by the way. Nobody has come out to back this up. Well, I think one girl has, but I mean, like, it's just, who cares, bro? Uh, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, just tell him to stop. Like, did you say stop at any point? Were you like, hey, cut that out? Like, it's, it'd be different if he was, like, touching under your shirt, and then you were like, stop, stop, and then he kept going, right? That'd be different. But no, you just, like, kind of let it happen. Eh, whatever. Like, oh, my God. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. I was scared to leave or make a scene. I stood up, and, he's, and it just stopped. Wow, dude. Wow. Out of the embarrassment. Eventually, later in the night, I found myself alone with him and his friends. Everyone else either passed out or sick. I dread the scenarios that could have played out that Yeah, night. her drunk was, her drink wasn't spiked. She was I mean, I guess she's alleging she was groped, but I mean, come on, it's so obvious that's not what happened. What ifs? I was just so naive, and lucky or not, the night came to an end with just that. The night lasted until 6 a.m. I was still drunk. I love the, the implication, too, that something else could have happened. Like, she could have been assaulted further. Like, oh, lucky or not, something else didn't happen. 
What what bullshit implication even is that? Alcoholic it's so I obvious. Like she's trying to like load this so hard. I went to leave, and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get an elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a guess I'm going now, leaving with a wounded puppy look. He proceeded to Instagram message me for a bit after that. Simple flirt. <laughs> Show us the stomach so we can see if it was asking. <laughs> okay. okay. Asking about the next convention I was going to. What the fuck? Saying stuff about seeing me there. Simple messages ultimately filtered into nothing. At the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that that had happened to me. I was excited. I mean, this is literally. I watched Destiny react to this, and he when he saw this part, he's so true. She is lucky. She is lucky that like you had you had a bad experience where like you got uncomfortable at a party where you're really drunk. You're lucky that nothing else happened, right? Because I mean, you're you're just so fucking retarded and like brain broken that obviously you would have let literally anything happen and just said nothing about it. Even if you would have regretted it later, right? It's just like, oh my god, I can't. Be around such big creators, to be at that convention in general, I figured that's just how things were. That that was the price I had to pay to be there. That anyone would have loved to be in my position, and that I should have appreciated it. George owns you, little bro. It was the first. That night, it was the first time anyone had ever touched me. Oh my god. I, sh I, sh I assured myself that I was just being sensitive about it all. That it wasn't a big deal, but assuring only can go so far. I felt dirty in a way that I couldn't wash off. Like, the poetry, too, is just fucking insufferable. I felt dirty in a way I couldn't wash off? Give me a fucking break, dude. Oh my god. I couldn't help the way that my body reacted and flinched. Part of me still wanted to feel cool about it all, to convince myself I was lucky so I didn't have to think about it. I would reimagine the scenario in my head, replaying it again and again, what I could have done, what I could have said instead, but it didn't matter. Crying is beyond fake. I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, I guess it's possible that, like, she, like, gaslit, like, some or somebody gaslit her, or, like, she gaslit herself and think this was, like, some super ultra horrible experience, right? But, I mean, like, I just all for nothing. It's all, it's like a huge meltdown for nothing, bro. Never changed, no matter how hard I thought nothing happened. I changed after that. Nothing of I substance. Wasn't fair. I was naive and maybe sometimes to a fault, but I could only wish it lasted longer. I miss not knowing. I used to be kind. I'm angry a lot of the time now at that person, at myself, at the fact that a year later, I can feel my heartbeat stop at the sight of him. I think he probably couldn't even make out my face in a crowd. I can't stop thinking about who I was before it all. Who I'll never be again. Oh my God. He, do, no matter he couldn't even recognize me in a crowd. Yeah, because he, put, he, he tickled you, bro. He didn't even touch anywhere inappropriate. He tickled you. Why would he recognize you in a crowd? It's not like he took your fucking innocence. He tickled you. <laughs> oh my god. This is how you're talking about actually been raped. I mean, exactly. How hard you try. I never said anything out of pure embarrassment. I was embarrassed it happened, and I was afraid to look weak or to show that it hurt me. But I realize now that I don't think being hurt makes you weak. I think it's strong to feel things that have hurt you, and then to still choose. To you're hurting George. For George's not found right now. Okay, buddy. I was scared to speak out because I thought it was my fault, and that I didn't deserve to. I was scared of him and all of those who surrounded him. I was scared of his power. I was scared I was mistaken, remembering wrong. I hoped I was remembering wrong. I was scared to go to any more conventions. I can fix her. Okay. You're banned. I I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm haunted by him everywhere. In usernames, profile pictures, in my own past. I lost the passion I once had for content. For anything, really. The association never went away. Oh my god. All the years I spent creating this community felt like a waste because of one night. I didn't even want to log onto this app. All over something that I never asked for. I can't help but feel angrier all the time. You also didn't ask. Like, I never asked for this. You did. You never didn't ask for it, right? It's like it's it's literally like when a little kid is like, "I didn't ask to be born." They're having like a little fucking freak out, right? If I once had for creation before it happened. I've Holding hands is it till the fourth date with her? True. I remember a moment around October where I made. Do not, dude. Do, do not make unconsensual eye contact with her on the first date, or okay, or else you're ending up like George not found. Saying they had minors in their DMs. It was an absent minded comment, and I apologize for it, of course. It was a possible subconscious jab out of my own personal resentment. My comments filled with people saying that I didn't care about grooming victims, and that I thought assault was a joke. And I remember sitting there, reading the comments, scrolling over and over again, heart beating faster. Over half of the comments had him. This is literally like gets gets criticized once online, reading the comments, going over them over and over and over again. Like having a total freak out. Profile picture. I just wanted to die. I was embarrassed. I wanted I to sad. die. I was angry, and I wondered if I could ever find peace. The idea of will I ever heal, it's scary. But I was tired of withholding my story to protect oh my myself. God. I spent so long convincing myself it was my fault. Was like, right? what is the point of even coming out about this? Does she think that George is going to, like, grope other girls? Does she think that, like, like what, what does she want to happen from this? Is this, like, a warning to other girls who interact with George in the future? I doubt it. A coward. I just wanted to disappear. 
but I didn't, because I realized that this is a problem bigger than me. It may sound dramatic, but it's how I felt for over a year. I feel everything very strongly, and I don't want that to change. Over a year me, since this happened, by the way. And I spent too much time downplaying my own experiences, and I still do. I'm still trying to realize that it's okay. My story is about power and age and consent. It pisses me off. Power, age, <coughs> and consent. Power, first of all. For, okay, first point, power. Uh, he never said anything like, if you don't fucking let me touch you, I'm gonna uh, not... Uh, you know, I'll, he, he didn't, like, withhold, like, a collab on his channel or something in re return for, like, getting to touch you or something. That would be an imbalance. I'd agree with you there. He didn't do that. Age, you're over 18. Immediately, completely null point. And then consent? You never didn't consent. Uh, you playing along is an, in is an inherent yes, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. He was close to becoming George Body Not Found. Damn. That they can hide behind their power while victims are left hopeless, no matter what scenario. It pisses me off that he thought he had the right to do what he did. That he did it even in my silence. Oh my god. <laughs> my biggest fears about speaking out was you guys. I wanted to keep my community safe from what may follow, and also, most importantly, from the ugly truth of life. I promise with you guys- Oh, guys, she's- Guys, she's so self- What is it? Uh, not self-centered, uh, fucking- She's so- selfless she's so selfless you know she did this to protect she was scared to talk out because of her community she didn't want her community to get harassed guys oh my god oh my god how brave how stunning she did this for her community to be open wow. and honest all the time i know but i didn't want to break up what we had i wanted to stay strong for you guys i didn't want this to define me or my community or all we worked for i didn't want it to all be overshadowed by one event but oh once again god. this isn't about me who's this it about then drama. This is about everyone who's watching that is like me. This isn't about- Everyone who George touched? What the fuck? <laughs> is this guy Epstein? <laughs> Canceling. This is about real people's lives. I live this every night and every morning with every touch. I feel I relive that room. She closes her eyes. Ah, George! <laughs> I just- I fucking can't, bro. It's about connections. One of my best friends, Rue, and I have bonded over similar experiences. And I'm sure there's many others like us. I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by friends who support me. Without them, I wouldn't be half as strong, and I wouldn't be here saying all this. You don't have to believe she me or my story. She pull her dog out. Because I know the truth. The beginning. True. So does he. <laughs> Get the ukulele and dog out. That'll make me feel really bad for you. He knows. And I have creators and friends that also know, and some who were there. This is about realizations. I was once a viewer, and now I'm a creator. I spent so long looking up to creators that I didn't know, who I had never met. Aspiring to be a part Never of Never meet your heroes, guys. Yet. Sometimes I wish back to when I was unknowingly looking from the outside. I now have a ruined perception, or rather a truthful one. In this community, a lot of us are told to remain silent and to bite our tongues, and oh those who speak God. out against it are often isolated. And that's wrong. It's all wrong. But most, and most importantly, this is about my story and the stories of all the other people who have been silenced, whether it's by their own fear, by power, by this idea that it's not significant enough. Because if it's affected you, it's significant enough. That's not true. I imagine, like... If, if it's affected you, it's significant enough. Imagine if I fired up a stream and, like, exposed, like, I don't know, some random fucking guy, like, in my personal life, right? Like, that is so, like, it's just so stupid. <laughs> this idea that anything that's affected you emotionally in any way, you can, like, fire up a stream and expose them, right? Like, it's just so, like, imagine if, like, somebody did a stream exposing their mom. They would be fucking laughed off the internet, okay? It's just, oh my god. Casey Anthony, True. This is also about all the asexual people out there who are surrounded by a world where you're wanted for your body. I grew tired of not being able to speak out about my own story, and if it wasn't for Shelby, I would have never realized my silence was bringing me everything except peace. I experienced firsthand what the power of speaking out can do to a person. I hope this can be of some help to those of you who are like me too, because we aren't defined by what has happened to us. I want to remind you all that it's also okay if you don't speak out, because you don't owe anybody anything. It's your story. Yeah, but why, why did you speak out then? You shouldn't have spoke out. What the fuck? It's your story to tell, and it's yours to heal from, and it's only yours. Sometimes the most healing treatment in the world is simply realizing that you're not alone in your own experiences. Um, and I wanted to share a diary entry I wrote around the time because I feel it was more fresh. And a this diary may help entry. Who oh, let's go. Them, or it also just may be clearer to how I was feeling because <laughs> I wrote it in my diary, obviously. This isn't really Has any mentally sane person ever had a diary? It's not poetic at all, actually. It's quite ugly. Around half a year ago. It's not poetic at all. That really just shows her fucking mindset here. She thinks everything has to be a big show. She thinks everything has to be poetic. She thinks everything has to be like poetic justice. Like, oh my god, I'm taking my abuser back. I'm I'm vindicating myself. I'm doing this for abuse victims and me and blah blah blah. blah. What the fuck is wrong with you? 
Oh, God, all these people are retarded children, bro. I was sexually assaulted by someone eight years older than me. A black and gray striped long sleeve, Nike shorts, Calvin Klein sports bra. That's what I was wearing. That outfit, it stained on me. They knew oh my when God. I was actually 18. And they you said this wasn't fucking poetic. This was like the gayest shit I've ever heard. I, knew, I was very drunk. I second guessed myself all the time remembering back. Was he drunk too when he slipped his hand under my shirt in front of everyone in the room? Was it this drunkness that whispered to me as an unwelcome form that prickled along my neck? Or was it rather this fake intoxication that allowed it to stay there as I sat silently, unmoving? At the beginning, I began to sympathize with him. I technically never said no, I suppose. But I never said yes. Time froze. Maybe I thought I could- It's not- Okay, she says technically I never said no. It's not like you were like, eh, like- You weren't like pushing him away and he was still coming at you. That would be different. You literally just sat there and took it like- <laughs> What? It turned invisible if I was still. Maybe. It didn't have to be real then. I had just met him. I should have been more grateful. Maybe I still had some hope in the world. Maybe I just haven't met the world yet. You're lucky to be next to him. So many people would have traded me places. I wonder how many have. I remembered his age. I wondered where I would be at 26. I blamed myself for all the things I could have done. I really did. I convinced myself I was lucky. I let half a year pass, wondering why it's now that I still cry myself to sleep imagining it. Why it's now that no matter how many times I wash, I still feel dirty. No, why is it that you George. Me no. Not fair. I was kind in this world and it was not fair to me. I stay up cursing it. Power. He has so much more than me. Protection. It's unfair. It's unfair he can do that and it's unsafe for me to talk about it. Why in order to have a peace of mind do I have to threaten all I've worked for? I've never been one to be bold, so why do I have to feel guilty for staying silent? I feel weak for what happened to me and even weaker for not yelling it out, from hiding from it. I don't want attention. I want to disappear. I wish I never had to be seen again. I don't want attention. I want it to disappear. Why are you doing the stream then, you dumbass? God. I don't want attention, but I'm going to do a stream talking about it to literally everyone on the internet. Wow. Big, big brain. And as soon as I do speak out of it, I'm seen different. Speak out about it, I'm seen different. I'm seen as a person with a body that can be used and used in bad ways. In reality, I never wanted it. I'm painted a victim of a crime that I never chose. And what happens? I mean, it's just a classic case of a woman regrets it, you know? What happens when it's all I'm seen as? What do I do then? When half an echo on, well, half echo on about proof or disbelief, the other half will pity me, looking at me like a wounded prey. When do I get my dignity back? When I watched it be ripped from me when I was too young to recognize it. When do I get my dignity back? It's just, uh, these loaded words, like, uh, dude, online, I get so fucking pissed off when people use these loaded words, like harassment, fucking, like, uh, when people say harassment, right, that's a really good example, because people are like, I'm being harassed online, when in reality, they're just getting a lot of mean comments, okay? It's such a loaded word that they're using it in a completely incorrect way, and it's so fucking annoying. She's doing the same thing here with like using all these big words that are so loaded and they mean just like nothing. But it just it waters down the use of the word. I don't want to be the brave one, but I will. <sighs> what are consequences to someone who has no conscience? My legs are dying. I'll never find the peace. I can't get it out of my head. Well, I learn to live with the pain I face. I just want to accept peace on their own terms. Is one defined by what's been done to them? Is this a forgiving world? Because I hope it's not. I hope for every touch unasked for and every person belonging to that touch rots in this world unforgiven. I'm very angry and I don't want to be an angry person. Rots in this world unforgiven. Wow. I mean, wow. I can't help Vindictive much? I no Whoa. Again, and I try to be kind and believe in a kind world, but a lot of it feels cruel. My kindness never brought me strength. Not now. Not even anger can. I'm always losing. I don't find it fair. How something can eat away at me this long. Why can't I forget everything but that moment, no matter how hard I try? I get mad at myself for making a big deal about it. But it was. I guess I can't change how things affect me. And I wonder why. I wonder why every touch is a bad one. I wonder if the world's so kind, why can't I experience its kindness? I wonder if I'll experience anything soft like that. Oh my god. I'm embarrassed. I'm tired. If you're embarrassed, you wouldn't be live streaming this right now. That's it. Um, which it was a lot of what I already said, but at least in that moment, it was more fresh. Um, do I need to listen to this? I don't know what else to say. I don't know what I'm gonna do after this. Again, this isn't about drama or about any of that. It's about a real story. It's about everyone like me who was silenced, who is still silenced. Um, I love you guys. I hope you guys stay safe. I hope nothing bad happens to you guys. Oh my god. Thank you. Um, and yeah. Okay, I can't. We're done. We're done. Uh, and then we have this right here. Her on Twitter. So this was, uh, the post has been, the George fucking deleted it, but the post is basically him saying that I'm going to be doing a response stream. We are waiting. Pull whatever you can find. I also have screen recording of everything. I planned using it in my, to support my case if needed, but please share it on my on my behalf if you like. Because we both know what happened. That's why I can sleep at night without scrambling for screenshots to try and twist. That's what you're scared. That's why you're scared. Because me and every other creator know the truth, and you do too. That's something that you have to live with. So supposedly, right, she's pulling the classic thing where it's like, I have proof. I'm not going to show it for whatever fucking reason, right? If you say you have proof, fucking show. This is what's so frustrating about like 
a little bit of soot too. He's like, I have proof that this bitch is lying, but I'm not going to show it for her. What? <laughs> Nuke that bitch, bro. Fucking show the proof. And what, what would the screen recording even prove, bro? Like you, you're the score. The story you already described isn't sexual assault. Nothing you've described is sexual assault. It's just embarrassing. Okay. Yes, I was naive, but I have room to change, to grow up. Eight years exactly. And when I'm your age, I'll be ten times the person you are. So cringe, man. And you'll always be the 27-year-old still acting like a child. Oh, my God. I mean, I, he just... Oh, my God. I'm not scared of you anymore. I've been waiting so long to say this, but you're a fucking coward. Goodbye for now. The beauty of weaponized vagueness. I mean, exactly. Exactly. So then we have his response. Hey, guys. I want to start off this stream by... Again, shout out to this random Minecraft YouTuber, dude. Banger. Saying that this stream is completely demonetized. I've kind of ads. I've kind of donations. It's so fucking annoying people do this. Oh my god, guys, look, I'm a good person. It's demonetized. Just fucking turn on ads, dude. Who gives a fuck? If you're getting accused of rape like this and it's complete bullshit, I don't give a fuck if you use use ads, okay? I don't care if anybody uses ads on any response to any drama ever, no matter what you're accused of, okay? It's awesome. It's based. Make money on your shit, okay, guys? However, I cannot turn off subs, but uh, just don't sub. But regardless, any sub money that is generated during the stream, I will donate to charity. In Why not stream, just be... donate any money generated during the stream? Like, why just, uh, why just that money? It just doesn't make any sense. Talking about some very serious topics, including assault, abuse, and things of sexual nature. So if any of these are triggering topics for you, please be aware of that and be cautious. Recently, a streamer named Katie Bugs went live and told a story involving me about, uh, sexual assault. So in this stream, I'm going to be addressing it. I was originally planning on doing this all live. Um, that's why I originally tweeted saying that I would be live the day that it happened. But I simply did not feel comfortable doing it live. And actually, very, very smart decision. A lot of times people do this live, they end up fucking it up. They're like responding to people in chat, spurking the fuck out. You know, it, it's a very smart decision to do a planned video response instead of like just going live and talking about it. Uh, you know, just because it's, yeah, it's just a bad idea generally. Because pe people are not good at responding to the allegations live, right? Like they almost always fuck it up from, you know, past situations. I, I know there are some, I just can't think of any fucking examples right now. Needed to make sure that I had all the details in place and. Bosh, uh, Bosh, that's what I was thinking of. Bosh really fucked up his shit because he went live and he just made himself look infinitely fucking worse. Got more people talking about it, making it a big story, right? Just wanted to make sure I was all. Then again, I don't think he would be too fucked if he just went live to talk about it because, I mean, her story is just such bullshit that, like, I don't think anyone ever would be, like, fucking. You know, I don't, yeah. Perfect, as it happened. You could fix it. I sat down, talked straight to the camera. Out all my thoughts, and then essentially just edited out the blank spaces where I was sitting here thinking about what to say, and then also added some screenshots for context. And I'm gonna be playing that video now. Uh, I'm gonna be telling the whole story, so it might not seem like everything is completely relevant, but I do need to tell the whole story for it to make sense and to fully inform you guys. So please watch the video in its entirety before forming opinions, as this is very important. Finally, before I play the video, do not say hate Katie, that is not the goal of this, and I do not want you guys to do now. So let's play the video. See you later, guys. Send all the hate you want, bro. Why do people do this, man? It's so cocked. Just. <laughs> It's just so cocked, man. Okay, so this is my side of the story of the two times that I have interacted with Katie Bugs in real life. So the first time that I met her, it was in Dream's hotel room at VidCon. To give context Dream. about the hotel room, essentially, it was a bigger room than average. It's not just a bed in a room, like a typical hotel room is. Essentially, it's uh, there was a living room, there was a table, and the bedroom was kind of separated from it. And for this reason, we used his hotel room essentially as a place where all of our friends could hang out in. VidCon is a four-day-long event, so we actually used it quite frequently throughout, throughout these four days. And we had creators, friends, in and out of this room throughout the whole event. Now, the first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room, and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people include Katie Bugs, her best friend, and three other of her friends. Now, the why is Dream in a? <laughs> It's just so stupid. Why is Dream in a group chat with all these people? Man? Like, why? Why are you talking to these people? Why are you, as a fucking huge Minecraft YouTuber, like, I don't know how old Dream is, but, like, you're, you're a grown-ass man talking to these, like, like, 18-year-olds? It's just, like, why? Like, uh, like, again, it's not, like, anything substantial. He's not, like, a rapist. He's not, like, a pedophile. It's just, like, weird, bro. Like, Dream is just a fucking weirdo, okay? That's what I want people to come away from this thinking. These five people, they're unofficial. Then again, we knew that. And they wanted to dream. They wanted to meet up with them and hang out with them. But dream actually didn't want to hang out with them, and the reason is because at the time he was wearing a dream mask. A lot. <laughs> Don't send hate winks at camera. Exactly. <laughs> felt uncomfortable wearing it because it's just the whole mask on your face. So he just didn't want to go to the party. Particularly, he even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to they wanted to come. So now these five people um, are trying to come to the hotel. But the problem with that is to get into the hotel, you need to have a Bitcoin creator badge. And only two of the people in the group chat actually had this badge. That was Katie and her best friend. So how many passes or how many of you have passed? Okay, Jesus Christ, learn to fucking type. Pass the hiat? 
<laughs> Did they make Giat <laughs> passes? Two out of five. What happened is Casey and two of her other friends came to Dream's hotel room. This was my first time actually meeting them in real life. I didn't even know Giat? that them. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games. She looked, he got that we Giat? Were, um, fun, talking with each other. Nothing crazy in particular. Now, one thing Casey said retrospectively looking back at the scenario is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we're doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't let me in despite meeting 26 at the time. And also since Casey's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of, mm. hand, one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds. Yeah, you shouldn't even be addressing this though, because it just doesn't matter. If he wants to fuck 18 year olds, yeah, you're weird for that, bro, but like, who cares? Let's hang out. I have no reason to think otherwise. Other than my Instagram bio, but I just didn't see it. But anyway, nothing actually particularly happened at this first night that we were hanging out. Everything was very friendly. We went our separate ways, and that's the end of the first night. And then the second time that we hung out was the next night after this. So we wake up the next day, we do Bitcoin stuff. After we're done, that's the final day of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is now technically over, but we have one more night in the hotel, but we need to leave the next morning. And actually, at this point, I actually had a friend that I'd only known online meet up with me for the first time. And the whole time I'd known him, he lived in a different country. He was actually living in Japan. And I told him I was going to Bitcoin, and he actually just happened to be in California. What you trying to do this weekend? Moves on Saturday? I think you're probably good to come, but possibly we go somewhere. We won't be able to get in. That would be an L, LOL. We have an extra bed in my room, so you can stay if you want. I'm busy until like 5 p.m. We should get after that. Fuck yeah, I'll be there sad. Same date, so the date's aligned, and we made plans to meet up. Now, he arrived early evening. I think it was around 5, 6 p.m. We just hang out in my room. Free message me. I'm bored. Can you come to my room? Let's hang out. Can you just us right now? I have a friend with me. Japanese guy from Team Speak, LOL. Uh, what we do. You're with who now? Just my friend. Are you in your room? Yeah. Do you want to come to mine? 1607. That's what we did. Me and my friend, I just met. Basically, I mean, I knew him online. Went up to June's room and we were hanging out. And again, the same story happens. Imagine online. having online friends, like, and going to hang out with them, dude. That's so, so weird. Before, they are trying to get to go out to another party that they're at. And same story from day one go, but was open to them coming here. And again, that is what happened. But this time, their friends were actually all able to get in. I don't know how they did it. But Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. So eight people total in the room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. But something I actually want to point out before I continue with the rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. I just think it's important to note already. Can you, uh, could you borrow a pass or two? Yes. Blank just got me one. Oh, my fail. Could you guys get one for Blank on a mission? Yeah. The story is slightly different from the reality of it, and I'll be- I'll keep you updated if they remove the barriers. Clay, I need to piss so bad whenever they're doing. We gotta speed run it. That might be easier for us to get them in. Ha ha ha. Yeah, it'll be so quick. Times throughout the rest of Me and Blank and Katie coming back to Hiat. Sorry. Okay. You can these screenshots from the text of the time that- 13 minutes, our guy is speeding, LMAO, you guys are going to the parking lot or where? We need to definitely give Blank a pass, I don't know. I'm having one of my guys come and meet you, give her a pass, and then walk in so no one notices her, let's strat. Cool, sounds splendid to me, okay, good shit, my goat. That they were all trying to come to the hotel and it wasn't just a, oh, we're willing to follow her essentially. They were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the hotel. I also chose to mention my online friend, it doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with. So I'm just saying it because that's how it happened and I want to make sure the story is straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they were already been drinking at this party before they arrived at the hotel room and they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play, they were actually the ones that were asking us and you can see that in the screenshot there. They actually texted more. So, I mean, here we have the first lie that has been conclusively proved by George Not Found. It's, it's amazing that people are still acting as if George Not Found is guilty, you know, he's, he's over, when he's literally proving that she's lying within her fucking response. Like, it's it's so insane to me, dude. Oh, my God. Clay, what app were you using for the most likely to game? It's my secret app on my phone. You can only ask uh, It's my secret app that you can only access on my phone with me, you know? Wow, shut the fuck. I'll find it. Okay, we're going to the hell right now to steal your phone. You fuck. So yeah, see, I mean, here it is. They're just desperate to play this. Who's most likely to? Like, it's one of these gay-ass drinking games. Multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we played the night before. And at this point, I was pretty drunk, and so it was basically everyone in this room. It was the last night of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a pretty stressful time, and honestly, a lot of people are happy when it's over. Not that they didn't like it, but uh, it's just a stressful event. There's a lot you have to do, and when it's over, you're just, you're just happy and you want to celebrate. So at this point, we then moved to the couch. There was a couch in the room. And I sit next to Katie. She also says, looking back on the scenario, that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to her. But again, at this moment in time, everything was friendly. Nothing sexual happened. I'm just literally sitting next to her on the couch. And during this, she was laughing, smiling. She gave no How dare back. you make eye contact with a woman, buddy? You're done. Too much swag. She's uncomfortable with me sitting this close to her. She also mentions that she was thinking about my age and that I was a lot older than her. Again, she was 18 and I was 26 at the time. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did, just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. And eventually, two of the people that came to the hotel room left. So then it was just down to me, D
that she then, but that, that's just not how it happened, and this is why. She brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The, the game was honestly the central point of... I mean, yeah, this is another, like, another, like, conclusive lie. They're playing games, like, they're playing the stupid drinking game on their phone, right? It's not like they're playing cup pong and she's on her phone, like, while they're playing cup pong. They're playing games on her fucking phone. It's not like she, <laughs> it's just so stupid. The interaction at this part. I don't know how, why she would post that fucking video, knowing that George knows all this, and knowing that he was probably going to disprove all this, like, retarded shit she's saying. It was a very social thing, you know, she was showing, she was moving the puzzle phone around, we were all playing the game, and bantering about it, just having fun with the game. So I don't see how, like, she resorted to it and was, like, using it in that context. She wasn't being awkward at all, there was no sense of uncomfortability from her, she was laughing and playing with everyone, and, yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure why she phrased it like this. We actually continued to send each other high score updates, even weeks after the event. To add further context to this moment, we were all actually sitting on the couch that was in the hotel room, playing this game on her phone. And, during this, me and Casey were at the far end of the couch, and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say, around an hour at this point, playing the game, talking, and just having fun, and for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So with her statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone, I just don't really understand it, and I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark, when in reality she seemed very happy with the situation. She was having a good True! Time. Own that bitch! I would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game, and we were talking about sex, and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't remember this happening. I'm not saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I just did not know that that was said. Another quote from her stream I want to address. She says, I mean, again, he's going so hard on this. Like, I didn't know she was 18. Just fucking, who cares, dude? Even if you did, who the fuck cares? She's 18, over the age of consent. I don't give a fuck, bro. Small alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games. They had already been drinking before they arrived. They were drunk, and the way this is phrased, it makes us out to look like we're kind of preying on them and like forcing them to drink when they didn't want to. When that's not the case, and as I mentioned earlier, they were even the ones asking to play the drinking games via the text before they had even arrived. So then, this is when her most important claim happens. I'm just gonna read the quote. She says, "Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch, in front of everyone." Yeah, out of, I've, we've been cuddling for two hours, but out of nowhere, he puts his hand under my clothes. <laughs> Simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no and still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked it to be. Again, as I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we have been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour. I mean, exactly. It's just so, so stupid. Up, and the way it's phrased, it it's like hard. all these Minecraft fans are so fucking autistic. They're so, like, turned me online. They don't understand that, like, Sexual interactions like this progress naturally, right? Like, uh, you know, there's like cuddling and then there's touching. And then, uh, uh, it's a progression, a progression, reaction. And if at any point somebody wants to have to stop, all they have to do is get up or say no. Okay, <laughs> it's so it's so simple, it's so easy, it's so so big brain. But like all these autistic freak children don't understand it. It's fucking insufferable. Like it happened pretty instantly, pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it. It was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Me and Katie were very touchy, very cuddly, and very slowly got more intimate. I've always been overly cautious of consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. Nothing I'm one of the good ones, guys. I happen to be over consciously. Uh, I happen to be very conscious of consent, guys. I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the, I'm one of the good guys. Okay, I know there's a, a lot of a lot of a lot of bad the bad guys, bad rapers out there, but. Me, me over here. I'm, I'm one of the good ones. Okay, I'm one of the one of the one of, I'm one of the non-rapers. Okay, I'm in the non-raping nation. Everything progressed very slowly throughout the night. And also, before I continue, I want to make it clear that the furthest anything I ever got was under the shirt touching and cuddling. Obviously, people don't typically ask if everything is okay, even such as touching someone's waist under the shirt before they do it. But in this case, I was extremely slow, and she was engaging with me the entire time, laughing, cuddling with me, and even playfully fighting me for the game that we were playing. Again, the quote that she said, "He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish?" I copped out a note. She's implying that I'm it's with malicious intent, and that she. I don't know, but also imply that I should be able to tell that she was uncomfortable with it. She says, later, he made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the game I was playing. Now, I actually remember this quite vividly. I remember she was playing the game, and there were parts where it would be very easy to lose if you were distracted. And she's right, I did do that. There were points where she was playing the game, and she was at a point where it was easy. Non Craper game? <laughs> and I would, for example, pickle her, or like squeeze her. And when I did this, she would laugh, she would turn around and smile at me, or she would play fight with me because I just made out of the game. She also says how, quote, I didn't speak or move. I remember being. Great. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, supposedly she touched him too, right? She was play fighting. Yeah, what did. Did she assault him? Did she fucking grape him, dude? To even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. At the race rate, anytime I did this, it was met with her either smiling, laughing, play fighting with me, and there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with that. She was not not moving. She was not not speaking. Of course, I don't believe that silence is consent. I just want to make sure that it is abundantly clear. She was visibly and physically responding well to everything that we were doing. I also want to comment on how she said that she had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night, for example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them, and she would come back to the same scenario. I also just want to point out that her I mean, yeah, exactly. She could have left. She could have stayed in the bathroom for a while, called someone to come pick her up. There's a million things she could have done. I mean, she's, she has no agency. She's just like a retarded child right she's like she likes to act like she's like actually like in the in the fucking sped room like duh like doing not like you know he, she wants us all to think that george is like a complete thing of editor but that's just not the case then afterwards did leave and i think it is important to note that she made the choice to stay behind for many hours more 
Also, his friend said on the call that they were flirting and cuddling each other like no issue. As I mentioned before, she did get up, say goodbye to them, and came back. We were even talking about staying up to wait until 11 a.m., which was the checkout time of the hotel. Since it was the final day, we were like, oh, I don't know if we want to go to sleep for a few hours, might as well just stay up. But that's not what ended up happening. And it's at this time that Katie says that, this is a quote, I went to leave, and the older guy then decided to leave too. This is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy, to be honest. She's basically saying she left, so I decided to leave too, which is not the case. What actually happened is Dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed. So the night was over. And we all left. She then goes on to tell about the elevator. <laughs> See, dude, it's so crazy how dishonest she is. She doesn't mention that Dream is going to bed, so everybody left. Like, it's not it's not like she just left and, like, George is, like, following her out. And literally everyone had to leave because George Dream is going to bed and it's his fucking room, right? God, so, so fucking retarded and dishonest, man. And how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own... Freshly 18, by the way, she yeah. She to take the elevator. She walked into the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. I would, essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed, and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times, and she didn't go along with it, which I respectfully took, obviously, and ended up just going down to my room. So yeah, she, she didn't have to take the elevator, yet she chose to walk with me to the elevator to say goodnight to me, which I think is interesting given how she's saying how... She was so upset with her. True, true. Her, her, true. Her, 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 her actual feelings at the time. And that's essentially the end of the story. This is actually the last time I've seen her in person was just as those elevator doors We messaged for a bit after uh, through Instagram DMs and Snapchat. And uh, the way that we talked to each other was always pretty ban banterous. For example, after the first night that we hung out, but before the second, she actually texted me and said, you better not be in dreams room tonight or I'm going to shoot your leg. Me and Blank and Katie coming back to Hyatt. What is, what? I don't understand what Hyatt is. If you come to Dreams Hotel again tonight, I'm shooting your leg. So don't, oh, awkward. I'm in his room now. You're going to, you're not gonna do shit. Obviously, she's not gonna shoot my leg. It's just we're just messing with each other. And I actually responded to her and said, "Well, guess what? I'm actually here right now." And yeah. After this, we texted for a bit. Uh, sometimes daily. Sometimes we take a few days break. Even a few weeks at some point. And at some point after VidCon, we were actually both in London at the same time. And she and she let me know this through her DMs. Now, she was so traumatized. She wanted to do it again. Okay. Um. Shut the fuck up, business. I can literally book you. What? I'm gonna need ten dollars. Actually, I'm gonna please and thanks. I don't even pay one cent for this stupid conversation. You are a bad business. Yeah, you're still here. Okay. I will okay. say she didn't come out. Outright. So, I mean, here they are even after being playful. She was so traumatized. She wanted to do it again. He got, oh, it's a hotel chain. Okay. Say, I'm sense. in London. But she did say that she'd gone to a place that was known to be a London thing. And I... You can't you can't say dickhead. It's only for English people to say. I just drank at Spoons last night. So I'm British enough. Oh, shit. Maybe you're British. What the fuck? Why well, drank at Simmons Bar last night? Probably. Okay. So just L Riz. <laughs> Ruin Simmons was a gay so awkward i'm living life the british way party and clubbing etc using gay as an insult typical from stupid business like you i come to that and said and asked what she was doing in london she, said, I did not meet her in london, nor plans to do so. she was always <laughs> she was studying him with gun violence first true really to me. i was running to her and <laughs> honestly i was very shocked to hear her say the things that she did say during her stream when i first opened up her stream it was, it was after she'd already streamed it but not long after so people hadn't yet made the connection that it was going to me and when watching it i was like I was actually interested. I was, I was thinking, okay, what's this gonna be about? And then when she started saying more and more details, I realized, wait, this is, this is about me. I was, I was very, very confused, very shocked, and didn't quite know what to think. Given I had no impression of any wrongdoing throughout this whole relationship that I had with her, not at all. Like it was, if anything, it was the opposite. I thought we had a pretty good relationship, despite the fact that we actually hadn't talked in a while. I thought if I'd seen her in, in real life again, everything would be fine and we would be friends. It was actually around this point after the, after the big one had finished, and we were messaging that I found out her age. And since then, I never pursued anything going forward, and I essentially stopped messaging her. Her last message to me was August first, twenty twenty-three, and I haven't replied to her since then. After I watched her stream, I was pretty confused. I didn't understand how her account of the story had been so different from what actually happened. A lot of the facts that she said just didn't happen at all, or were phrased in ways that just make me look as bad as possible. Saying things like, um, I insisted on her playing drinking games, or that she was frozen in place, or that she was scared, she was having fun, she was enjoying herself, she was showing this with her body language, with the way that she smiled, the way that she laughed. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for George to prove this, obviously, but uh, you know, he showed her to lie multiple times, so I'm more inclined to believe George, right? That's just how it works. It's unfortunate, but if you lie a ton in your fucking allegation, I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to be less inclined to believe you. Unfortunate, El Riz, El Bozo, you're destroyed. And just her overall general demeanor. And one thing that I think is very important to differentiate here is that I do believe that she regrets being affectionate with me. And that, that really does make me feel terrible. I never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or regret the interactions with me or anything along those lines, regardless of if it's sexual or not. And I'm truly, really sorry if I contributed to You shouldn't be fucking sorry, dude. Comfortable with this after the oh my god. She says, quote, at the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky. It's not your fault she regretted it after, okay? That it had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators to be at that convention in general. Now, actually, I've had a similar scenario to this where I was in a sexual, I had a sexual experience with someone where in the moment I was perfectly happy with it happening, but then afterwards I regretted it. And I'm not saying this to get any form of sympathy. I'm not looking for that. That is not the case at all. I'm simply saying this because I can- He was raped too. Wow. Now, I'm not mad at the person that I was in this sexual experience with. <laughs> I know next to so I, I can't. I not like how it ended up. <laughs> if I could go back and not do it, I wouldn't have. I wanted to do it in the moment, but then changed my mind later. Which is completely valid. You're completely allowed to feel that way. But what isn't okay, and I think is just completely unfair, is to act as if I am the bad person in the scenario because you changed your mind later. I also want to separate this. From True. Abuse and 
certain scenarios that other people have dealt with recently or just in general i think it's completely fine to come to terms with your abuse over time and realize that it was bad for you and a terrible situation to be in and to then look badly back on that person that is completely valid but this is different again this all happened within a four hour period three four hour period and i was not given any sign of discomfort unhappiness or anything along those lines and again it was the opposite of that she was happy she was laughing she was smiling and as far as i know everyone else in the room would have all the same at the time so now what i'm thinking is why would she come out and say it like this why is she saying this now i don't think she's purposely being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that what i do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group and this is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much especially publicly so it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to talk about team it. games or whatever me, tribalistic her friends about what happened. whether or not that was a negative connotation i don't know i wasn't part of these conversations of course but she clearly told them about the scenario and when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends they're obviously gonna look on this poorly Sad context true in the, in the worst possible light they're gonna be super biased so, the cards are gonna be stacked against you okay I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby on the way and they were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and I, and I was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong. Now this person is in Katie's friend group and they were concerned that a group of five people would go off to Dream's room to join three additional people, which is an, an interesting concern to have. I actually have heard from another source that overheard this conversation and thought it was quite strange that she was worried about this. I think it seems very likely that after eight True. months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us publicly as well. That's a really weird thing to be worried about. Don't know what they say privately, but can't be any better than what they say publicly. Obviously that is going to affect the way that you view the experience. And it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be thinking about it. And Clearly, it changed the way that she thought about it. And I think it's completely unfair to judge me and my actions based on how you feel about it now, eight months later, versus how you felt at the time. Because at the time, you were not uncomfortable with it. I mean, uh, I mean, to be fair, she did write in her diary about it or whatever. So she felt about it, like, right after. But, I mean, then, uh, like, right after, like, yeah, it's just, yeah. And it still doesn't matter, right? Because she read it right after that, yeah. Do so you already supposed to get a summary? Do, smiling, happy, laughing, playing along with it, everything. And that's all I really have to say on the matter. Still keep supporting Victor. Any money done, like, oh my god, so, so fucking stupid. I guess we'll read through this real quick. So here's the allegation based on George's new response. Katie drops his stream accusing George of sexual assault. George tweets he will be streaming within the next few hours to respond. George stream is response to Katie's allegation and looks good. Katie responds with her 10-page notes rebuttal where she expands on her story and showcases evidence that one of George's friends, Anonymous, also checked on her. George immediately concedes on Twitter, says Katie changed his perspective the night, and issues an apology. I'm sorry, Katie. I'm sorry. Dream starts a Twitter space and fucking cries. Time passes. Dream or George think, what the wait, what the fuck, dude? We can text our friend and see oh, what slash why he sent that to Katie on mod, OMG, and then find out that Katie either completely lied and put a misleading or fabricated screenshot in her document, or she got confused. Oopsie tee -hee. This caused literally everyone, including George and Dream, to think that George was guilty, and then these two morons issued a statement without even reaching out to their friend first to check with him. George posts his new video, walking back his previous tweet, apologizes for a non-existent power dynamic, and gives Katie inhuman levels of charitability to pander to his audience. I can't feel bad for this guy. Unreal levels of dumb. Totally deserved. This fallout and his response ensures he will face similar mob in the future. I mean, exactly true. It's literally what Dream went through where he, like, continually embarrassed himself over and over and over and over and over again, right? And, like, he would respond every time and he'd, like, apologize, he'd concede. And it just led to it happening over and over again. When You just need to kick these people to the curb, okay? Like, perspective it, and opinion on uh, it's just uh, speaking of dream here here we have his response uh i'm not gonna read it out myself because i will fucking end my own life but you know, here we have what dream has to say about it on reddit the post is titled my honest and open point of view dream based on hearing both three counts of stories being there myself and talking to everyone that was there afterwards george's recounting of events is much closer to what actually why do you need <laughs> why do you need to <laughs> Okay, whatever. Why, why, if you were there, do you need to hear both sides of the story? You were there. You know what happened, supposedly. It took place. I think people expressing that someone did not consent to touching or cuddling because they did not verbally speak it is extremely dishonest. You can clearly consent without verbally specifically saying something, just as you can nod your head to say yes. Silence True. is not consent. True. Oh my god, I did not expect Dream to come out and, like, uh, actually be in somewhat intelligent that's crazy but i was there and although i did not know any sexual touching had taken place i can say for a matter of fact that their interactions were extremely positive throughout the night and she had many opportunities of separation even getting up and down off the couch and laying back with him after the alleged sexual assault took place and her best true so i mean here we even have dream confirming what george is saying right he's a sec he's a he's a first-hand account witness and leaving after what took place and her choosing to stay for hours no one that was there had anything but positive experiences to share until many months later and i was shocked to hear anything at all everyone was already drinking and in no way was them drinking along with everyone else an inappropriate action everyone was drinking and everyone was in and out yes she was not 21 no it's not a normal thing to stop creators at a convention or anyone for that matter from drinking because of that many of the people i've seen criticize this fact already have very publicly drunk many times with under 21 content creator and are not being impartial i will agree with George saying there's a group of content creators that have a very large hatred for me i'm not exactly sure why i have some ideas but it's been going on for over a year now multiple it's because you're cringe and you suck there we go figured it out for you buddy
These content creators have spread total lies about me and take any opportunity they can to spread negative rumors. Katie is not one of them, to be clear, but she's friends with many of them, and this is even something we discussed in person. I obviously can't say for certain that this has anything to do with what she said, but I can assume it had an impact on the lens she viewed George through. One of these content creators that used to be on the Dream SMP spread that they asked me about the grooming allegations when they happened, and that I proceeded to ban them from the Dream SMP Discord server to hide it. This is completely false. They were never banned from the Discord. They left randomly themselves. I answered every question they had over text and volunteered to answer anymore. This lie was incredibly harmful and still has effects to this day. This is one of the many lies or exaggerations they've spread. Both Katie and her other. Wait, see, why doesn't Dream fucking expose this freak, dude? Why is Dream so such a fucking pussy footing? A retard, where he doesn't just fucking nuke whoever this is off the face of the earth. That's what he should be doing right now. Yeah, this person really fucked me over. Okay, nuke them. Why not, dude? Just fucking nuke them. Their friends there spoke about how this group in the UK, who Katie's best friends with, despise me, and they are not sure why. I talked positively about change, and hoping one day they would come around. Months after the incident, one of this group tweeted accusing me of bringing 18-year-old girls at VidCon to my hotel room to drink. I was shocked at this, and immediately looked into what he was talking about. This was two months after VidCon. He was talking about this. I didn't know Katie beforehand, and she was already drunk and drinking, and essentially one plusing with an overage friend of mine. I even suggested that- Why are we in a group chat with her then? That's so weird. They don't come. After this is when I had a conversation with Ghosty, Katie's best friend who was there, about what he was saying, and how it was ridiculous, where she agreed. I was confused as to why he was saying what he was Ghosty. saying, as it was about me, and no one that was there had any idea what he was talking about. Katie was avoidant of clarifying anything to them or defending me, and was careful with how she worded things and texted me about it. It was speculated by everyone that was there that night that it was because she's good friends with the UK group, and she didn't want to lose them as friends if she defended me or my character, or said anything positive over text. Both Caddy and Ghosty expressed that their interactions with me were not representative of how the UK group talks about me. We talked all positively afterward about those nights, and even talked about meeting up again. I had no impression of anyone having any negative opinions about anything at all that happened at VidCon, even after directly talking to and asking people there specifically about it. I, so, I mean, yeah, here we have, it's just Dream basically corroborating everything George said. Terrible for Katie, and I believe she genuinely has extreme feelings about this. It's Regardless over for you, Katie. Form, but I'm sorry that I had all coming. contributed to this negative period the of her life. I would hope that she knows that I had They're absolutely no negative you. intentions at all. I really thought she was a great, fun person to be around. I do not feel bad for any of the people masquerading as heroes, though, that they are doing so for personal vendettas in relation to this or other accusations, including my own. Just like you should not trust that creators are always good people, you should not trust that creators' supportive actions are always done with good intentions. Many creators that expressed to me behind the scenes that even if the allegations are true, they wouldn't care because they are not a big deal, are some of the same people that were later praised for no longer associating with me due to these allegations. Many <laughs> creators never asked me any questions at all, even sent private messages of support, and then chose to ask me questions the same day I had drama with another creator they were better friends with. Many creators pretended to not be associated with me publicly, making jokes off the potential abuse, while privately being positive to me. Other creators dropped me as soon as I was no longer working on projects they were heavily invested in. But we're I mean, yeah, it's just Dream crying here. Dude, this is so annoying from Dream. He always, like, cries. He's like, oh my god. People were mean to me in private. People did this to me in private. Like, bro, come on, bro. Like, quickly find playing dumb when it benefited them for their next big stream. Many creators that knew about this specific situation for a long time and hated me long before it continued to make slights without me ever having any idea why they were doing it. They publicly attacked me far more than ever saying anything negative towards George, even though I had no idea of anything remotely about the situation being a thing, and they thought that he was a horrible assault. Like, expose you. Why are you even saying this? It's so... <coughs> <coughs> it's so nothing if you're not going to say names, right? Fucking nuke these people out of orbit. Incredibly obvious to me that this is because they That's already hate me, and not happen. because they care about any potential victim, even if they are close friends. Creators are not always who you think they are. Even the ones that seem the most proactive about supporting victims can be using vulnerable people to push their own agendas, whether it's their audience, actual victims, or friends. Support victims because they deserve it, not when it benefits you. I will never stand for abuse, and have shown that on many occasions, even with my closest friends, even my best friends. I feel like this post has been very negative, so I just want to end this positively. Most creators aren't like this. There's a lot of good in the world. There's a lot of kindness and honesty and love. There are so many creators that are fair and kind and truthful, and no one should give up hope on creators in general. It's just like everywhere else in life. There's a balance. The bad is just amplified on social media as everything is under a microscope. I don't think all is negative, and I think having these conversations is important and helpful for everyone, including victims and anyone learning. And growing. This is all it's I have to say, as there is no more information to be gathered, and I would like to end the horrible cycle of drama for my- uh, It's just soy, soy, soy. That's all it is. I, I hate Dream, dude. He's so fucking annoying. So we have this leaked Discord message right here. I had to... Hello, everyone. Bad timing. I'm getting on a long flight as of now. As Ghosty said, I have seen- I have said what I Oh my fucking god. This is why I didn't read that fucking essay from Dream. It's because I'm retarded. I have seen what was said, and I will formulate all I have on the flight for a message as people have asked me to. Once I'm grounded, I'll release it, and we'll be away for a bit. I'm telling you this so you don't stay stressing, and I know when things will happen. Originally, I did not want to add to the situation with proof. I didn't want to create this idea that people – that it's petty drama and not real life. People that have been affected – You've been affected. Ugh, it's just still this fucking language, man. I also don't want victims to feel they have to be pro they have to prove themselves to people to be believed. I also don't want victims to feel they have to prove themselves to people to be believed, uh, bro. I don't know, man. Maybe just actually pr like if you're gonna say stuff publicly, maybe you do have to prove it. I don't like insane take nowadays. I guess. If you're going to say shit publicly, you have to prove what you're saying. If you're going to make career-ending allegations, you have to actually prove them. I know. It's just fucking it, – it's really insane stuff. It's really insane stuff. I believe you, but I cannot control how situations play out. Yes, I know. I do not owe it, but I will give it nonetheless. Uh, this will not be the only proof or response I have as I don't want to keep – proving myself and participate in a drawn out back and forth publicly because you can't because you're wrong 
The more information and screenshots released, the more complicated everything gets, and the point of all this becomes lost. I don't want to participate in him proving himself or me doing so. I just wanted to share my story so victims around me know they aren't alone. Yeah, sure. Sure. That, that was your only intention all along. You just wanted victims to feel good about themselves. Wow, you're such a good person. So selfless. So amazing. I will let people do as they please moving forward and will not respond to anything else as well because I need to take time for it all. I appreciate all who have supported me and especially those who have reached out privately to show with their stories and for those who felt strong enough to publicly come out with them, you aren't alone. Once I am back in about a week, I will stream my final response and message to everyone about the situation bigger issue at hand because there is a lot to say before moving on or healing love you all wow so i mean there's her leaked discord message and then here we have her official response it's so insulting actual victims i mean yeah it's so like do, she thinks this helps victims like you really think this helps victims you're fucking hurting them bro by doing this like by, by doing this dumb bullshit you're hurting them for now, this is what I have to say. He admitted to touching me what, that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation was over. He said, "I silence does not equal consent. Okay, wait. We're already fucking misrepresenting things. He, he literally said you consented, just not verbally, okay? So you're twisting this in a very dishonest way. Uh, he said that I didn't verbally consent. Yeah, true, but he said that you physically consented. Like, you were, like, playing along with him. You were fucking, like, rubbing up on him. You know, like, uh, that's consent, okay? Uh, if you're, like, you, know, I, you don't have to be a body language. Like, you know, there's all these, like, fake pseudoscience body language experts out there. You know, I don't believe in those people. But, you know, you don't have to be a body language expert to know when somebody is consenting, okay? It's very obvious if you aren't completely autistic. Never got verbal confirmation from me. Chose to move to a sexual act on the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking. So, I mean, again, that's just a point for him, right? Why would he fucking, like, grope you in public <laughs> with everyone watching if you, like, if you're, like, fucking, no, no, no. Why would he do that in public, dude? You're retarded. I don't know how these two facts coexist. How I can, how I can consent when there was no question. How I can consent when drunk. I mean, he was drunk, too. Did you rape him? I don't know, bro. You were fucking being touchy with him too. According to multiple accounts from both Dream and George, I prepared proof on the idea he wouldn't admit to it. They would deny touching me or being there. He admitted it, that I was drunk, and he touched me in front of everyone, that I never said yes, nor did he ask. I'm still asked for a response proof explanation. Frankly, it's fucking insane. <sighs> so stupid she's so dumb if you need more after hearing him admit those two simple facts then nothing i can say is going to change your mind but here it is anyway addressing the stream as for the eye messages he showed outside of the insta dms all proof of him was showing a group chat that he wasn't even in showing messages from my friends which he which isn't me the only message showing a response from me was the one where he asked about the drinking game we played that was after we played it on the first night and the convo where he's okay so but it's even the point of this. She's like trying to get him on a technicality, like, oh, he insisted we play drinking games on the first night, but then on the second night, I really wanted to play it. I like, you're alleging he like fucking wanted to get you super drunk on the second night, right? Like, it's just a complete contradiction. The night where nothing happened, I liked the game and wanted to play it with other friends at the conversation at the convention. So I asked for the name. I didn't know how that's relevant to anything. It's because you wanted to play the game, right? You're saying, oh, I didn't want to play this game. Like they were pressuring me to play this game. They pressured me to get drunk. You wanted to play this game. You were asking for the name of the game. You wanted, you, you were foaming at the mouth to play this fucking game you played before. Okay. That's the point. You're being intentionally dishonest. Why well, I went back because my friends want to, and I went with them everywhere. Uh, they went on a trip. Okay. They literally, literally at one point during the night, your friends left. They left you. Why didn't you go with them then? Like at least some part of your friends left. Why didn't you go with them then? I would also like to clear up things that this, Jesus Christ. I would also like to clear up. This has all happened when I was, when I went back, nothing happened at the first night. I mean, you were cuddling. Okay. Oh, the first night. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see something. I also did not admit at first because it's embarrassing. And I thought, irrelevant but the second night another reason i was willing to go back was i heard of a different creator who was in the hotel room i wanted to meet but when i found out they had left an hour earlier i was already in the uber i had forgotten this until looking back at the text where i said this to a friend the day after wow 
So you were just clout chasing off another dude. That's <laughs> I really wanted to meet someone who had even more clout than Dream and George, but unfortunately they left. So I mean I uh but brought me and ghosty backs and dudes from CM. He said that was there. Okay, so that's just proving that, I guess. <sighs> they were all fine, like I said in my stream, but I did have my age in my bio. Like to this day, the messages were nothing insane. It just banter, like I said, he admitted to the messages him after i never hid the fact i was still considering myself lucky for what happened to me even if i was uncomfortable he, he, and didn't ask for it i was hating myself around now i was thinking i was ungrateful but as you can see nothing insane or proof where these just said just banter so i mean yeah they're just flirting i mean again that just proves that you're you weren't so traumatized that like you felt the need to cut contact right if somebody traumatizes you like to this like insane degree where like you're having an emotional reaction, even talking about it, you would think just maybe that you would cut them off after they did that to you, right? You'd think maybe that if this had such a profound emotional impact on you, that this is just so terrible, this thing happened to you, that maybe you would just cut them off. But no, you, you can't do that, obviously. That would make too much sense, okay? Uh, my fault. I forgot you're a woman. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I need to calm it down. <laughs> Again, I felt lucky to be talking to a verified account with someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while. I was uncomfortable with the, with what happened, but trying to swallow it and suck it up so I didn't have to acknowledge or accept it. I mean, like, it's fine to be uncomfortable with it, bro, but like, it's not groping, okay? You you framed it as if he like raped you or something. It's not that, okay? You, you're, you were just uncomfortable with it after the fact. You, you Seemingly, you weren't even uncomfortable with it amid the fact, Although our texting ended a month earlier, I can see why people thought find me at fault. But the thought process of someone who went through what I have is a very unique experience, which is why I understand why it seems so stupid. Only so many people have been in it to understand. So you just don't get it. You've never met someone as clouded out as cool as Dream and George, okay? Like he said at one point, ask for my snap, good ones. Also, IG messaging, IG messaging is lame. What's your snap? We did not have Snapchat at all. But we did not Snapchat much at all because I don't use Snapchat. I haven't since around middle school. The most that happened were a few pictures of him in a quesadilla with a quesadilla. Wait. Okay. That he sent me. And when I was responded back in DMs, which didn't last long, we all stopped interacting. It was around Paris TwitchCon. I walked him out of the elevator. We left at the same time. My room was on the other side of the floor in the hotel. You had hallways or rooms on one side. The elevator's connecting them. And, the, and then the other hall was on the opposite side. Therefore, he had to walk through the elevator room. I didn't walk him in there. I mean, you guys were just walking together. You didn't, okay. It's so frustrating because in your initial response, you're acting as if he follow, you know, he's like fucking creeping on you. He's literally fucking following you out of this room when you left, right? It turns out that everybody left at the same time and he just followed you to the, the, the elevator to say goodnight. Like, bro. We both headed in that direction. I said, well, bye. And that's when he did the whole elevator is broken bit. So, I mean, he's just he's just being like, he's just being a goofy little guy, okay? I mean, I'll admit it's El Riz. That doesn't sound funny at all. Probably El Riz. You know, it's just the unmentioned friend. There was a man who was there that I left out. He wasn't there for long. He left early, which is why I didn't mention him. I don't even know his name, but there's a message from this guy. I've never spoken with him. It's simply a message he sent to someone who was in the room that night too, and he already asked this question. He left before anything really happened. I'm currently watching George 26 cuddle with KD 28. So, I mean, that was never disputed. A lot of the touch was initiated by him. Probably not realizing it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from the left as I faced Ghosty to my right. Who cares? A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but it was just me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk, close together. But I get it. I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling was automatically meant to turn sexual. Okay. I didn't know it was an invitation. I just going to push him off in front of everyone. I mean, it's not an invitation, right? But if you're like, if you're reciprocating and then he escalates things and you don't say no, then that's your fault, okay? Like, uh, it's just so stupid. It's uh, how, uh, ten bucks says she's autistic. He took a step further in front of everyone because he assumed things and assumed he had the right as a shy person. I could, not, as a shy person. <laughs> She says it like it's a mental disability, bro. As a shy person, like, Jesus fucking Christ. As a shy person, I could not speak up in front of him and everyone else, let alone say yes, even if you wanted to take a step forward sexually. Why do it in the open? I mean, exactly. If he was planning on raping you, why would he do it in the open? 
Uh, if you're cautious about consent, why not ask? Because you're you're being very reciprocative. He doesn't have to ask. That's usually the first step. And more importantly, why does everything have to be taken a step further when I may reiterate that I was drunk? He was also drunk, right? He was also drunk. So why wouldn't he? Like, uh, he's also not in the, the correct state of mind or whatever. So it makes sense that he would maybe do something rash. I don't know, dude. It's just she keeps using this I was drunk excuse, but he was also drunk. She could have moved. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink, move her, etc. Mentally, I believe I was in a room on a sofa with people on it. Just spit back where you were when you initially got up. Mentally, I was also drunk, even if I were to move. That more obvious hit to his ego. If you were to move, he probably would have just stopped pursuing you. Like, a crazy thought. Maybe if you just moved and sat in another spot in the room, using any excuse you wanted, you, he probably would have just stopped, Okay. To him and everyone in the room, I, a bold move I didn't need to make. I could just deal with it till the night was over and didn't want someone I had watched for a while to uh, while I'd fallen to hate me for denying him and sitting near him. I didn't want to embarrass him for myself. I know it's dumb thought process. I acknowledge it. Okay. She stayed when her friends left. I didn't make the conscious decision to choose to stay. I didn't make the conscious decision. Okay. My friend left throwing up in her hand. I didn't know. She was so drunk she couldn't hold her vomit and passed out in our bathroom. And the more the night went on, the drunker I was, like I said before, I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big creators. Those last three points, may I remind you, were not an invitation to be sexual or that I wanted it. And uh, if he thought I did, he could have asked. You guys cuddled for two hours. That is basically asking, okay? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. If you cuddle for two hours, you could you shouldn't be surprised when someone touches your tummy, all right? Well, he assumed because your body language. We had just met. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. You guys have been uh, the, uh, spooning, as you put it, for two hours. You guys have been spooning for two hours, okay? Why did he think he knew me so well he could assume how i felt assume he knew my mannerisms meant uh, dude okay you don't have to know someone super well to know like basic human mannerisms okay if, if you're like being uh, are you human do you know what it is like to be a human do you know the human experience uh, when someone is reciprocating it's very easy to tell no matter who they are okay people don't it's not like some like gay like animal thing <laughs> like this person is like acting like they're like a, a dog or something like, oh my god they don't understand how this specific species reciprocate like, you know what i'm saying like it's just so stupid like everybody has like general ways they reciprocate when people are being sexual with them okay you didn't know me apparently you didn't even know my age but you knew what i wanted no he assumed it's what i wanted because i wouldn't want that from someone like him okay why wouldn't i want that so, okay yeah, i just get it and remind me, since I was smiling, since one was smiling an invitation, since one was sitting next to someone an invitation, since one was being drunk an invitation. Uh, spooning with someone is an invitation for a, a, a tummy touch, okay? I will say that. Any laughing I did with your hand under my clothes would have nerves because I didn't think cuddling would result in to that. Oh, my God. Do you talk to other people? Do you have any human interaction ever? Is this like your first time meeting another person ever? My shock left me speechless because I had never been to a guy's hotel room, never done anything sexual, never expected that cuddling meant what it did. I didn't know if it was normal or not. He touched me for the first time. So dramatic, even still. Very fucking grown man who knows better. You're a grown woman who knows better. 18, by the way. Grown woman. Grown woman. Why do I have to be strong and pull away or just stop? It's my fault because I was asking for it. Because you're a fucking human being. You're an adult. You're expected to be strong enough to say no, okay? You're, <laughs> or just, like, do something, bro. Hinting at it. I should have known. Like, how is he supposed to fucking read your mind and play these, like, mind games to know, like, this is so stupid. Like, even if he had have asked, would you have been strong enough to say no? Even if he had have asked? But never, for, it, for not being able to ask a simple question, for doing it at his age, silence can be consent- a head nod, silent confirmation in order for confirmation to happen. It needs to follow a question, a question, whatever you ask. Okay. But how drunk is a person supposed to consent? You think it was the power to consent to a 26 year old man to touch me because I laughed, but he was drunk too. Personally, when I'm drunk, I don't stick my hand under people's clothes. 
on a couch in a room full of other people without asking. That's just me though. So you keep using this excuse, right? Over and over and over again. You want to use this excuse that you're drunk and that's why you weren't able to pull away because you weren't in the right headspace. But then when it's George, when it's George who does something like slightly irrational, like putting his hand – it's not really even irrational. A normal person would do this as when they're sober. But when he does something that you perceive as irrational, uh, he doesn't get that excuse of being drunk because, because that's not an irrational behavior you participate in when you're drunk. It, it just doesn't make any sense, okay? Anyone in the room could verify she was comfortable. The, my text the day after, hey, I want to make sure, okay? I didn't like the way George was touchy and uh, told me about the shirt thing. I just want to make sure you're all right. Yes, I'm okay. It was definitely a bit weird, but I was drunk, so I didn't feel like he was doing anything to stop it anyway, so it's over now. So, hey, buddy. So, I mean, I guess this is just her friends confirming that uh, she maybe looked a little uncomfortable, right? Of course, I played it down with my response. At the time, I was embarrassed. I wanted to seem cool because I'd never been in a sexual assault before. How was I supposed to know what was supposed to feel like emotionally? I was nervous. I was uncomfortable because I didn't want or because I was unexperienced or because I was drunk. I didn't understand what I felt, but I knew I felt off. And the friends in the room were some of the last people I came out about how it affected me because I was embarrassed at my inexperience, embarrassed at the fact it was out in the open and scared to react when it happened because with any reaction I showed had an audience that he made his move in a hotel room full of people. But let me remind you their initial gut reaction by simply being in the same room and seeing the situation and then messaging the next day worried, asking if I was okay before they had talked to me about how they felt. So gross. The wristband. I would like to mention another girl I didn't mention because the other guy, she left really early that night. I'm admitting I didn't mention her because she only tagged along one night and didn't do much. I also, NPC, she's saying she's an NPC. I also didn't know her too well. She was friends with Dream, Clay, and the other girl talking to him. So I haven't messaged her since the night until today she reached out. Here are her messages about four from that night. Her messages to me the day a screenshot goes out to Clay in. Okay, uh... I'm fine watching his stream for the first time right now, and I'm losing my mind because the photo, he thinks this is you and my hand. So, I mean, there's the screenshot there. It's clear she sent the message in the chat. Obviously, it being in her hand, no room for confusion it being on my hand. But I mean, the wristband literally says that there's opportunity because it's loose on you, right? The implication is that, is that you're going to remove it and give it to someone else. It's clear, uh, it's clear that she sent the message in the chat, obviously being on her hand. No room for confusion of being on my hand once again. He was not even in the group chat to see it, only Clay. The, the implication there is, is that you're passing the wristband around so you can get alcohol, right? And even if he assumed we were all 21, because one of us, the, the, all these assumptions would have been cleared up pretty quick with a question. I mean, why would you question somebody when they have a wristband confirming they're 21, bro? Like, <laughs> that's like, that's fucking crazy. The party we were at in the wristband talk initiated was an 18 plus party. They needed a band to enter. When we asked people around for a wristband to enter the party, not a 21 wristband to drink. As you can see in the pictures, a 21 wristband was given by staff after seeing ID and after entry, the wristbands we were asking around for searching for was just entry to the party. Even if he thought I was asking around for 21 wristband, that would only prove that I was underage. Again, neither guys with the party. So again, he, I mean, like you said, he wasn't in this group chat. He didn't see you asking around for it, but the implication is that you had it on at one point, right? And you used it to get alcohol. Like, why wouldn't he assume you're 21 if you have alcohol? Okay. It's, just, it's so stupid. You do adult activities. People are going to assume you're a fucking adult. You are an adult. You're 18. We don't end up staying the night at the party because we couldn't get wristbands for everyone. Only a few of us got in. My one friend gave theirs to me so I could walk in and see the creator party for the first time. But I left immediately after taking a video or two, knowing Ghosty and the other friends were sitting outside unable to get in. With the wristbands cut off by staff as we left, I didn't even have a party wristband on any time. I met with them after the room, let alone a 21 age one. I bet you all watch my vlog and VidCon documenting videos, party, and the wristbands being cut off in the vlog. <coughs> Jesus. So, I mean, I guess that's fair enough that uh, 
the wristbands were cut off, so he couldn't have been passing them around, right? I thought she was 21. The girl who left early sent me this message today. Her conversation with Clay that night. Before she left the room, she recalls to a friend a few days later. I typed a message on my phone and showed it to Clay being like, does George realize there's eight years between him and Katie? And he uh, looks at me deadpan and is like, I don't see why it matters. I'm like, oh, okay. So again, it doesn't matter. She's 18. This person is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, dream is based here. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You're an adult. You're 18 at this point. Maybe show a little fucking agency, okay? You weren't, uh, he's not a pedophile because he <laughs> touched an 18 year old stomach. He was drunk, so I did not fault him for the may responded. This was, uh, oh my god. He was drunk, so I do not fault him for what he may have responded with, as maybe he wasn't thinking right. As I had not been able to while intoxicated this is also her recalling so it could be wrong or untruthful but i don't believe she has reason to lie simply messaging a friend a few days later especially when at the time of that text and up until i came public about it she didn't even know anything happened that night before she left (coughs) she left before sorry i mean it's all just like this is why i was saying that george should have just fucking conceded on the 18 point because it, it really doesn't matter. He just said, Yeah, she was 18, but I didn't really see a problem with it because, you know, she's 18. Uh, like, it's fine to call him weird for that. He, George is a bit of a weirdo. But, I mean, it just, it really doesn't matter. And he shouldn't have, like, died on the fucking I didn't know Hill, right? Because now he has to deal with this and him being potentially proven as a liar by this other person, right? <sighs> <coughs> that night, the game we were playing. Who's the last loser of virginity, a.k.a. the youngest? <coughs> this is when I said me because I was 18 and still a virgin. And this is also when Clay chimed in to argue that his best friend and say along the lines of, well, he lost his at 19 and you weren't that old yet. So technically he would still drink. Wait, what? I was 18 and still a virgin. So this is also when Dream chimed in to argue for his best friend. And say along the lines of, well, he lost his at 19. You weren't that old yet. So technically, so he technically would still drink. I don't know. What what does that even mean? And he, and he drank. I assume this meant he was listening, but maybe he wasn't. Uh, I mean, okay, that doesn't prove he's listening at all. This is a dream talking about George. What? Why would you assume that he's listening from that? It just doesn't make any sense. I remember this question because of text I sent and because it's something I'll never forget. Yes, I know it hard to remember a question like that thinking back now. He was also drunk, so it's hard, even harder to probably remember. But that night, he couldn't have forgotten it that quick. Remembering back when my answer is just an hour slash minutes prior before making a move didn't seem impossible with him saying I didn't remember what happened that night and nitpicking my story apart with his great dunk memory. I wonder how he can't remember the most important part is aka me saying my age. That's not the most important part. The most important important part is you saying that you were like uh, assaulted and like fu- you were sexually assaulted when that didn't happen at all. That's the main allegation. The main allegation isn't that George, George is a pedophile for touching. Uh, nobody thinks he's a pedophile for this. Okay, if you think he's a pedophile, like twenty six year old and eighteen year old equals pedophilia, you're actually down to something. You're actually retarded. Delete whatever online presence you have because it's doomed for you. It's over. It, you're just stupid. Okay. That's the reality of it. I don't think he's dumb, even if he was high as someone. Especially in his DMs, he would check for an age, at least in a bio, someone who is, yeah, I just don't care about the age stuff. George shouldn't have died on the hill, though. I will admit that's an L for him. Our friends influence her because they hate us. I wonder why. They're actually grew because of what happened to me. So you're just confirming what they're saying then. Because what happened to you isn't that big of a deal, right? Uh, any normal person would read that situation and go, hey, nothing really happened there. You're fine. But uh, their friends read into it and their hatred grew. That's just kind of just confirm. That's literally a self-report. It confirms what George is saying. These situations have always ends a victim blame. <laughs> if I didn't do this, if she didn't have – if she wouldn't have worn that. That's not – nobody is saying this. If she hadn't have worn that, nobody is saying that you were too scantily clothed. You're shadow boxing. She hadn't been drinking – she was asking for it. You, okay, whatever. If you were cuddling for two hours, you were asking for it. Okay, sorry. 
we are embedded in a society cover for assault when we're built on it. It's easy to say what I should have done looking for the outside. Not being one in the situation in the moment, it's also easier to think of how I could have gotten out of the situation now that I'm not thinking about it. It's also easier to say that like he's completely wrong for doing this to you when uh, you only know your perspective, right? From your perspective, yeah, it's easy to say that like, oh, he shouldn't have done this. But from his perspective, he had literally no reason to think he shouldn't have done it, right? And now that I'm sober, I can make clear choices. I want this situation to circle back to the original point to make the to make aware of the reality that many girls face in this community, that many people are forced into silence. It's not petty drama, but real life. People that have been affected. I don't, I just don't want victims to feel they have to prove themselves to be people, to be believed that they are only valid. They had proof to, I believe you. My story was built different because it was on such a wide scale, such a big audience. Yes, I know I do not owe it. Victims don't owe anything to anyone. Well, my unique situation, I have to give proof nonetheless, considering the circumstances I'll accept. If people don't believe me, all I've said here is this. I mean, you're not accepting people don't believe me. Come on, let's be honest. I also want to know that uh, those who fake allegations to platform someone or seek attention are scum. You are the reason people come, <laughs> reason people choose to never come out with their own stories. You are the reason people, there's a trust. Oh my God, you are the reason there is distrust in coming forward about these situations. I hope you rot. I mean, wow, that's that's big words coming from someone who really didn't have anything happen to them. I find it funny when people say victims do this for clout because I promise you anyone who had come forward about something like this knows a large sum of what you receive is endless hate and it becomes what you're known for. It's the price you have to pay to speak up. I, I, I literally broke a record at this point. Nothing happened. This is... This will be the only proof or response I have as I don't have any energy and I have said all I have to say. Any response further or further from now, I will not be responding to because I'm physically away and I also be mentally taking a break. My comments on platforms are flooded with hate, so I cannot say I'll be active anywhere, but I'll see the support. I appreciate you all. Wow, you're just such you're such a victim. Yeah, you, know, you were <laughs> you were touched then, you're being touched now, I guess. <laughs> I just hoped some people would realize how many unknown things go on behind the scenes and how dangerous blind idolization is. But I suppose it's an issue we'll take much more time. Honestly, the biggest, this story is a, a very good uh, warning against blind idolization, right? Because all these fucking freak-ass Minecraft fans blindly idolized George so much that when he did something they perceived as bad, they had a fucking meltdown freakout, right? They did something. He did, he made one slight like little misstep, I guess. He, it's not even a misstep, but something they perceived as a misstep, and they all immediately turned on him and fucking tore him to shreds. Okay, this is the issue. This is the problem with cultivating an audience that idolizes you, right? It's just so stupid. And most importantly, isn't one isn't a one time thing. The larger creators that have reached out about their own stories concerning them are still too scared of them to come forward. They make me sick. Women who have been friends with them. People I watch. People I've never spoken to. The people I have. This is so much bigger than me. I wish they find peace. There is a reason people have distanced themselves from these men. There is a reason other creators act like they do. My experience is simply only one public and no other creator owes it anyone to share their experience with them. I just wish it was more obvious seeing the day. Uh, seeing the people who have distanced themselves and the people who still around them to this day. So, I mean, again, it just seems like she's trying to uh, destroy George as much as possible. Like, oh, it's, I mean, just look at who's around him. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want to ruin his career, guys, but, I mean, just pay attention to who's around him. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'll be away for a week, then I will stream my final statement once again. I can hear my voice and sincerity. And probably my final statement on it all. I'll be watching. Has it been a week? No. A week tomorrow. Maybe we'll have to go live tomorrow too. Fun. I want to continue my content, music, videos, and support you guys. I don't want this to define me or stop me simply because it happened to me, but there is a lot more to be said. Before I can make my peace, I don't know how long it will take in returning to the internet, but once I've said, I wish it all a few S and healing. So yeah, I, I agree with Destiny. The, this person should be run off the internet. This is fucking... It's undefensible, dude. Like, this is despicable. So here we have George's response directly after all the allegations came out. 
Since reading Katie's, like, this is just so fucking cucked, man. I can't do this. Since reading Katie's newest post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information I was not aware of all bef- at all before. What new information, dude? What new information are you receiving about your own objective experience? Are you fucking, what were you not aware of? What? I have so much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really hope you can hear my words. I'm not trying to understand that I do not have any bad intentions. It's not hard to change the fact that you are hurt. I will be saying more soon. I hate how fucking cucked all these people are, bro. You should nuke this person off of the face of the earth. Like, holy shit, man. It is so... It's just so sad. For those of you who don't know, Casey... So here we finally reach the end, okay? We've gone through all that preempting, and here we have the final response from George, okay? His final statement on the issue. Are you guys hyped? I'm fucking hyped. Let's give this a watch. <laughs> he looks like Dream in this fucking, <laughs> in this pause frame here. He posted recently a stream and accused me of something very serious. I made a response and then she made a follow-up response. This is my response to her follow-up. Throughout this video, I'm going to be Jesus showing questions from other people, just for context, and just to make it clear, I don't want any hate to be sent to anyone, including these people. Here are the two tweets that I posted about the situation. These are now deleted. I only made them to let people know. <coughs> I'm doing a very serious turn related. Okay. So that I had intentions to make a response, and I didn't want people to think I was just completely radio silent in the time that I needed to make those responses. First of all, I just want to make it clear that my tweet that I put out after my first statement wasn't somehow a big deal or completely backtracking what I originally said. I suspect that changed. It wasn't a minute, dude. You literally like sound so pussy whipped. You're like saying sorry, 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 and over and over and over again. New information that Katie had provided. So now I'm just gonna go over Katie's new statement and talk about what she had to say. So first, she acknowledges the texts that I showed about them talking about wanting to play drinking games are real, but that they were from her friends. So this is reasonable. I only brought up that point because the implication was that it was kind of creepy of us and we were forcing the game on them. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously complied. In reality, it was mutually talked about and everyone was just having fun. So next, she mentions that one of the reasons she wanted to hang out in our hotel room was because there was another creator that was in the room. But then that creator didn't actually end up being there. Again, reasonable. I didn't know this at the time. There were people in and out of our hotel room throughout the whole event, so she could have potentially heard of anyone being there. When her group I mean, was yeah, just useless details she was bringing out basically. Like, who cares? She was messaging me about whether or not I would actually be there or not. And that made me think that she wanted me to be there. But I don't know, maybe she didn't care and she just wanted to see the other creator or just to be with her friends. Next, she shows our Instagram DMs and she said that the reason she kept messaging me in a friendly way for a while after this whole thing happened was because, and this is a quote, she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I'd followed and watched for a while. Now, this is not something that I was thinking about at all. I wasn't aware that she ever watched my content in the past. That was never brought up. This actually makes me feel pretty bad. The only reason she was messaging me was because I had subscribers or something. I would never. I mean, you shouldn't feel bad about this at all. You should just fucking be like, yeah, you're a dumb bitch for doing that. Like, you're retarded. If you don't want to message me, don't message me. It's literally like Instagram DMs. You can block you can block me at any moment. You're fucking stupid. That's what you should be saying right now. If it wasn't so fucking pussy whipped. Again, the only reason I actually brought up us messaging after the fact was to show that we were so friendly afterwards and that I didn't know that she was uncomfortable at the time. She also confirmed exactly. that we Snapchat, like I said, but also that nothing really happened there either. The next thing she talks about is the elevator. She said that we left at the same time and that her hotel room was on the other side of the hotel. So there's like kind of two corridors connected by uh, an elevator room in the middle. So she's saying that she was just going past the to get to her room. And again, this is totally reasonable. I brought this up because from her stream, the way that it was told kind of implied that I followed her out and then that she waited to take the next elevator instead of getting with the Yeah, door. he shouldn't be saying that's completely reasonable. He should be saying, the reason I brought this up is because you fucking lied about me, bitch. Is because you fucking painted this false narrative that I was like following you to like harass you more like the fuck the, the layout of the hotel is completely irrelevant you're just you're it's literally a red herring to what's actually at hand here and what you're actually saying while I tried to convince her to get in I'll just play the clip by saying this so I'm not speaking to her I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me we walked to the elevators where I didn't get on he then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get an elevator to prove it was broken. In my original video, I just wanted to clarify this, that we left together um, because the night was over and that she was on the same floor so she didn't actually have to take the elevator and it seems like she agrees with us now. So next she agrees with me that she didn't mention my online friend that I just met that day. She said she didn't mention him though because he left early and he didn't even know his name. And she shows a text message that she says is from him from the night where this happened where he says this. Obviously this is implying that he was kind of uncomfortable with what was happening and also that he knew her age despite just meeting her. And when I first saw this, it actually majorly changed my perspective on the night because that would mean that my friend was also uncomfortable and somehow knew her age when I didn't. And even though she said that he left early, my memory of it was actually that he was the last to leave just before me and Katie left. Dream also came to me and mentioned that this changed his of the night as well because that would mean that he was essentially the only person that wasn't uncomfortable and that therefore he should have known this really concerned me i kind of was just sitting there like really thinking how how could this happen so i reached out to my friend to talk to him about it and it turns out that he actually didn't send this message i'm gonna play a phone call that i had with him after i found this out oh so here see here we have him proving more lies right and this is what nicholas uh, you know that tweet read earlier this is what he's referencing right they both freaked out because they saw this text message where it's like okay one of my friends is now actually against me they saw the night differently from how me and dream saw it Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I don't remember the night as well. Maybe I was drunk and I don't remember. But if he hadn't, he should have just fucking done this before he, like, had this freak out, right? Because I think it gives more context. So, so there's a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, no, that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of the phone numbers or anything like that. Can you kind of just talk me through your, like, anything that you remember from essentially the entire event? Well, before the con, I hit you up to hang out. And then you eventually had an extra bed for your hotel. You got there. Around like five o'clock, we just went to your room. Is this the there. Japanese guy? He doesn't sound very Japanese. 
I think it was towards like nine or ten o'clock. We met up at, at Dream Spot. Then I was just asleep for a bit, and then you were dream mentioned, like just having some people come over and hang out. We were playing. I forget what the drinking was called. It was. I think it was kind of like Cards Against Humanity, something similar to that. I didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary. I didn't really notice any. Any, like bad vibes or anything like that it was a little playful maybe a little flirty um i noticed the guys were just kind of like playing with each other and just like kind of cut up a little so bit. i mean here we have uh, three people all cooperating what george is saying here right all three big creator uh, i don't know if this guy's a big creator but two big creators and this other third party all cooperating what george is saying here and we have multiple instances of katie bugs lying just straight up lying about things i mean wow isn't that just fucking amazing right hmm hmm so I was just, it definitely didn't seem like she was like uncomfortable, you know? I don't know, it seemed like everybody that was there was having a, having a good time, because I mean, we were there pretty late, so. I, I don't really follow like the cinema stuff like that, so I'm not up to date with what's going on online. The way she was explaining everything, uh, I mean, at least to me, like it didn't, it was not like that at all. To me, it kind of seems like a misunderstanding. It wasn't really thought in my mind that like, oh, this, this girl like, could be in some sort of danger, or she's being like preyed on or anything like that, because yeah, even, even though George is my friend, if I noticed him doing anything that I wouldn't want someone I'm friends with to do, then I would, you know, I would, I would say something about it or not be a part of that situation. She says that you left early on in the night. Can you talk about that? I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos, and I got the party pack or something. Yeah, for some reason, I couldn't believe I actually went and got tacos. <laughs> I know for a fact that I got the tacos like extremely late. Like, I had to go in the drive through when I was in the car. Like, I had to walk through the drive through and like, order in the speaker. That was yeah. fun. I know I left at 5 for very close to that time, because right after 5, I, I texted Dream that I left open the deadbolt on his door. Right after I left, I texted him that. Mm -hmm. I think that was like 5, yeah. 10 a.m. Continuously, I had a really good, good night. That's kind of the impression that I got from everybody else, too. Like, everybody was... Having a good time. Okay. Uh, hopefully I mean, we kind of get it. Way. He had a good time. Uh, kind of bad situation. This is fucking wild. That like this whole situation came from like that night. It was just like mind boggling, dude. Mm. Like I wasn't. I couldn't really believe like half the shit I was seeing. Like someone that was there. Like, like other ways I've heard it being like described. Like from what I was like reading and watching online is actually kind of insane. So obviously after this conversation with him, I was pretty confused. Maybe it was like a misunderstanding or something because obviously they wouldn't just show this screenshot if it was fake because I could disprove that pretty easily. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on it. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Katie's gone confused on who said what. And I'm really not trying to nitpick anything here. I just really think it's important to make sure that everyone has. No, she fucking lied. Okay, this is complete bullshit. Shit. I don't believe it at all, okay? She fucking lied. I mean, this person has been so malicious, lying at multiple points, doing these red herring bullshit arguments. I'm comfortable saying it. She fucking lied. She probably... I, I, she, I, she seems so fucking malicious at this point. I don't know how anyone else has come to any other conclusion. ...full picture of the whole event as it happened so that people can accurately form their own opinion. Anyway, the next thing that she talks about is the cuddling. She said, and this is a quote, a lot of the touch was initiated by him, probably not realizing it. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but it was just me being drunk. I do think a lot of the cuddling was initiated by me, but some of it wasn't. I was also drunk, but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual. He also says that, quote, I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. I don't think just cuddling is an invitation for anything. I only brought the cuddling up because it's something that she didn't mention at all in her original stream. We sat on the couch. Yeah, it's crazy she didn't mention the cuddling at all. She just like acted like he fucking like groped her, right? <laughs> but in reality, there was two hours of physical buildup to the touching. The guy sat right next to me while playing. It was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. And again, it's something that I think people need to know about to understand my perspective fully. The next thing that she talks about is that I said she got up and sat back down with me multiple times. She agreed with this, but said that the reason she did this is because, quote, I didn't want someone I'd watched for a while or with a large following to hate me denying to even sit near him. Now this makes me feel terrible. It's something that she mentions throughout, this power imbalance, but this is not something at all that I was thinking about at the time. She was a Bitcoin-invited guest, she had a hotel room on the same floor as Dream, she was friends with my friends, and honestly I just never imagined that this is something that she could have thought. And I do think that's my problem. I should have been aware of this, or at least the possibility of this being the case. Oh my god, he's so pussy-whipped. No, you fucker. No, 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 no. You had no reason to think that. You had absolutely no reason to think that. You should be shitting on her right now, okay? You had... There's no reason you should be giving this much this much ultra charitability, okay? You should be fucking shitting on it right now. You should be saying, like, oh my god. Dude, he's, like, submitting to his fucking audience right now, and it's not going to work, okay? Because the audience that – your entire old audience, George, they all think you're a rapist. They all think you're a terrible person. They all think – they're all going to eat you alive for the rest of eternity because you're just going to keep bowing down, and it's never going to work, okay? It's time to get – like, it's time to just shrink your audience a little a little tiny bit. Okay, you're, you're – George, I already know you're rich as fuck, okay? You're a big YouTuber. Just shrink your audience the tiniest bit. You can kick out all these like child freaks who think that you're like a rapist, okay? Because they're not worth, uh, they're not worth f pandering to, right? Because they're just gonna eat you alive over and over and over again, like they did to Dream. I am sorry. I, I feel and you deserve it because you're doing this. At all. To be honest, in that room, I wasn't thinking about you know YouTube subscribers or fame or, or power or anything at all like that. I just saw us all as friends hanging out, having fun. Again, I'm not trying to downplay this, but it's genuinely something funny. I'm really thinking about going into the future. This comes up again later, and I'll have more to say then. Next, she talks about how I mentioned that she stayed for hours even after her best friend left. She says that her best friend left throwing up in her hand, and that she didn't know she left. That she didn't make a conscious. That Hyat, <laughs> dude. No way. I did not know Hyat was a a hotel. I thought it was just like Yat, you know, like Kaisenat Yat.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my recollection of what happened. I actually, I remember Ghost getting up to leave and Katie getting up to sleep with Baito. I also asked him about this and he had the same recollection as me. We were all drunk, so I can't 100% say for sure what actually happened, but as per my memory, she was aware that Ghosty had left. Also, according to what she said, Katie and Ghosty were sharing the same hotel room together. So the obvious assumption is that they would probably leave together. The fact that she chose to stay despite not really knowing most of the people there gave me a pretty positive impression on how she felt about staying there. She says that after Ghosty left, quote, I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big creators. Again, like I said before, this is just not something I even thought she'd be thinking, and I'm sorry that I didn't. Next, she talks about me being more touchy. No, you shouldn't be sorry that you're thinking that. You're fucking. You're stupid. On and says this. Quote, you didn't know me. Apparently, you didn't even know my age, but you knew I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? This is absolutely not how I think about this kind of situation at all. I would never think like that. And honestly, it's kind of an evil way to think about things. Just having the opinion that you can do anything because you're famous or whatever. And I never once remotely thought anything similar to that. And I feel terrible reading those words knowing that you think that about me. I would never think that I'm owed anything from anyone. Just oh my God. Why is he bowing down so much? He's literally pussy whipped. Who's more pussy whipped? George not found, Dream, or, or D-Max? <laughs> Wait, no, okay, George not, wait, no, sorry, George not found, dead on Dave, or D-Max, who is more pussy whipped? Who is more pussy whipped? I have a YouTube channel, especially in the intimate context. Again, I'm really sorry for this, and it actually has been pretty eye-opening to me. I'm gonna make that tweet, that's a banger tweet. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I feel like this, because obviously there are people out there that think like that, and use that to take a bunch of people. And it makes sense that if you think that about me, that you would hate me, but that- No, it doesn't bad. make sense, because you, she was giving all the, the correct, she was giving a, a multitude of physical indicators that she was interested, okay? It doesn't make sense that you think that. You're, oh my god, dude. I don't, this guy deserves to be burned, just because he's so fucking stupid, and he's making so many concessions, and he's just- And I just really hope that you can understand that. Now, another thing that she mentioned that changed my perspective on things was that she showed texts from two of her friends the day after, checking up on her to see how she felt. She says, quote, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit, like, damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. And this is something that I was actually completely unaware of. I wasn't aware of any unconsciousness in the moment, after the fact, or even after Katie's first stream. I just wasn't Yeah, because she didn't show any of it. <laughs> she wasn't, she didn't communicate it at all, neither physically nor verbally. You know, it's all on this guy to fucking communicate that uh, ask at every fucking turning point. But she she has no agency to communicate anything at any point, any time. Because she's just a girl, guys. She's just a girl. I actually had the opposite impression just because we were all really friendly up with Dream actually had a conversation about this with almost everyone that was in that room a few months ago. One of their friends actually tweeted about Dream saying that he was inviting an 18-year-old girl back to his hotel to drink at VidCon. And was implying very negative things about Dream being a person. So Dream realized this could have only been about Katie because it was a pretty specific call out. But thought that it was just being purposely misleading from someone that hates him. Dream actually had no idea as well that anyone was uncomfortable and assumed that this tweet was implying Katie was uncomfortable with Dream. He reached out to Ghosty about it, asking what this was even about, and did the same to others, including Katie. Now, I'm not going to be showing Katie's text with Dream because at the time Dream had told her that her messages and conversation would not lead to text. However, here is Dream and Ghosty's conversation about it. I was never brought up or mentioned at all. And also, when Dream makes fun of Harry for being ridiculous and making stuff up because nothing happened, and we were all friends, she said, exactly. She actually spoke about this on her stream very recently, and I don't want to speak her, so I'm going to play the clip where she clarifies these messages. The only time that we had a conversation about anything that had to do with that night was obviously when the stuff with Harry happened. Um, and he uh, texted me asking if it seemed like anything had happened. And I, at the time, said no, because the conversation was not about George. The conversation was about him, and it was about the underage drinking, and it wasn't ever about whether or not Katie, you know, it was it was always just about him and not George, which is why I said, dude, no, nothing seemed wrong because he wasn't doing anything wrong, and I can stand by that. I, I will stand by that comment, and I said that in one of my posts that, you know, you know, like it, it wasn't him. That was our conversation. It was never about George. It was about him and the Harry situation, and it was about Damn. It, it, at the time had seemed that it's so over for this bitch, bro. I mean, how is she not done after this? How is she not completely kicked off the internet forever, right? How is it not completely Jover? Dream was one who had taken advantage of Katie, and I said he didn't, and I and I, I didn't lie. And Ghosty, I'm really not trying to use your words against Katie or you. I'm just trying to paint an accurate picture of our perspective of the night. And to do that, I kind of have to talk about everything that we knew. I don't think your words negate at all how Katie felt, of course, but they did affect how I perceived the situation afterwards. Even after Katie's stream, this kind of confused us and Dream especially because he thought that this would have come up in these conversations. Now he was he was so confused that he was convinced that Harry was essentially being malicious. And he said this, and Ghosty and others there agree with him. Ghosty even said that her friends should get to know him because she and Katie had actually had pretty negative opinions of Dream before meeting him, but had their minds changed after meeting him at Vicon. This is obviously said about Dream and not me, but Dream looked at this as positive about the entire experience and shared this with me. It seems like Ghosty has changed her mind about this now, but I just think it's really relevant to how we thought about the situation. As and just show this to you guys. Honestly, over the last year or so, anytime a creator has kind of distanced themselves from me, I just assumed it was because of Dream. Dream had false grooming allegations against him, and I assumed that because of this and my association with Dream, people didn't like me. After Dream posted his video disproving these allegations, I honestly felt pretty poorly of True, the true. Is that was still negative to me? As now, I, I mean, honestly, George shouldn't even feel bad about this. If you're fucking distancing yourself from someone over false allegations like this, then uh, you didn't want those people near you, anyways, dude. They're just fucking retarded. I don't, you know. <sighs> Well, there was literally no reason for it. And now, after seeing Katie's follow-up, I realized that probably everyone knew about this behind the scenes. And I think that is insane. I was walking around with these people at other events or interacting with them in any way, and all the time they were just thinking terribly about me. And I didn't even know, and neither did any of my friends. If I'd seen Katie in person, I would have gone up to her normally. I would have assumed we were still friends. I think this is a massive injustice. Katie. I know it's because this video is super. I, mean, I should back up from my mic. This super. This fucking video is hella quiet. I don't know why. It actually kind of makes me rethink a lot of my experiences with other creators. Just. Back Shall we? New information. And thank I you for the. Thank and even you, right now, after all this information is public and out there, I still haven't had a single private conversation with
prior to day three. This is all just to say that I didn't have any idea that there was a problem, and I wish that I had, and I should have. The last thing to mention is her age. Like I said, I wasn't aware at the time that she was 18. I mentioned that they'd come from an official Bitcoin party. Oh my god, he's still fucking dying on this hill, bro. <sighs> That's so annoying, man. Just say, nobody cares that you felt an 18-year-old stomach, bro. You're not a pedophile. You're not a rapist. It's just so, like, why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> why? Why? Were drunk, and I made the assumption that, knowing how these events are run, that she was probably over the age of 21, as they wouldn't have been able to drink that otherwise. Now, they actually said that they drank somewhere else briefly before showing up, and that makes more sense. It is irresponsible of me that I made this assumption, and going forward, I will make sure to explicitly ask for a person's age. And I'm sorry, Katie, that I did not do that. I also brought up how, when I was going back through the texts, I found a picture of one I'm wearing a 21 plus age wristband, and I showed this picture. Now, this is from a group chat that I wasn't in, but Green showed me this when I was making my video, and I think it was relevant to why I was on the impression she wasn't 18. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it, and it was just someone else's hand. So, in these texts, they say, This is a quote, Loose ass 21 plus wristband. We have a strat. Now, to explain what this strategy is for the people that haven't really been in a club environment or a place where you get a wristband like this, essentially, they give you this wristband to show that you're over 21 so you can get drinks from the bar. These wristbands are made in a way so that once they're put on, they cannot be taken off without breaking it. And that's precisely why they're used to prevent people from underage drinking. But clearly the security that gave the girls these bracelets didn't do a good enough job and didn't put on tight enough. And this just shows that you can never be too careful and shouldn't make assumptions like I did. And I mean, exactly, dude. Like, they're literally in this group chat talking about... <laughs> They're in this fucking group chat talking about taking off this wristband to like act as if they're older than they are. And then we're supposed to just believe that they uh, that George is completely in the wrong for assuming they're 21, but they're literally acting as if they are. God, get the fuck out of here. What's up? What's up, Kaya? And sorry, I'm very tired. And I've I'm been up for a while. I need to go to bed. From Katie's statement, it kind of seems like she didn't believe that I didn't know she was 18 and kind of thinks I'm just being dishonest about that. She said that she had it in her bio and that I DM'd her, so she was very confident that I knew. Later that night when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him, and in my Instagram bio in bold was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. For context, as you can see here in the screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. And because of this, I was also pretty confused how I didn't know that she was 18, as it's literally in her name, not even in her bio. It's in her name. If it was in her bio, it would make sense to me because I could totally see myself going to her. Wait, fuck, so, sorry. For context, as you can see here in the screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. And because of this, I was also pretty confused how I didn't know that she was 18, as it's literally in her name, not even in her bio. It's in her name. If it was in her bio, it would make sense to me because I could totally see myself going to her profile the first time I wanted to message her, and just like a message and never really going back to her profile, and essentially just any time I interact with her was just through the direct DMs where you actually can't see someone's bio. So I actually completely see where she's coming from, and it does seem kind of ridiculous that I didn't know. So because of all this, I actually started to look into this quite a lot because I know that I'm not stupid and must have seen it. But also in my head, I know that I didn't know her age, so it made complex. So today I actually found out there are two different types of professional Instagram account. There's a creator account and a business account. And for some reason, Katie's account was a business account instead of a creator account. We actually... No shot a rich YouTuber should be that negligent when he knows his audience thinks a two-year age gap is rape. <laughs> Yeah, true. Joke about this at the time through RDMs because I was actually able to book her as like a business and I didn't really know why I was able to do that. And weirdly enough, it actually turns out that business accounts don't display special characters from a username in the username that's displayed. And if you don't know what I mean by special characters, it's basically just a character that isn't something you can type on a normal keyboard. And because her age and the smiley is a special character, it literally just didn't display it in her username at all. And you can actually see this in a picture that I sent to her during our messages that her age is not. I mean, yeah, true. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's proving here that he didn't know the age or whatever, but it just doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter if you knew the age or not, because she's 18. She's 18. You didn't... Uh, not sure what's happening right now. Basically, this guy cuddled with a girl for two hours at a party. They both admit it was completely consensual, but then at one point during the cuddling, he like touched her stomach, and that was too far, and now she's been sexually assaulted. That's what's happening right now. And uh, because she was 18 and he was 26, that's just, this is somehow like super bad. And he, she, he, he, this girl was like sexually assaulted. That's what she's saying. Displayed in her name. And you can also see this in the screenshots that I used in my previous video that her age also isn't visible, despite the fact that her age was in her name at this time. But now, actually, as of today, her account isn't a business account anymore, so her age shows up again. And this is a screenshot I took. Today. Yeah, weird. <laughs> it's so slimy, dude. She changed it back from a business account so it would show the age. Wow. It's just, it's so stupid. So slimy, these people. Obviously, this wasn't a feature that I knew about at the time. And I'm excited for her response. Like, there's, like, she's nuked after this, dude. There's no way to respond to this. We have to do quite a bit of research today to work it out. So I hope that can kind of play that up a little bit and that maybe you can see how I wouldn't have seen it. I actually do think that the age difference between me and Katie was a pretty big factor. I am older than her, and based on what she said, I do have more assurance than her. She never went into the exact specifics either, so I respect Katie. I... Uh, to be fair, she did say that her his hand was inching towards... Uh, she, it was inching upwards. So, yeah, the, I mean, she was basically assaulted, dude. It's over, like, you know, she... You know, she, all this crying that she was doing on stream completely deserved. I mean, this this guy's career needs to be ruined because he touched her stomach. He he tickled her a little bit. More details than she did. To make sure that I'm not airing out any information that she's not comfortable with being on. But I have clarified that the furthest things went was under the shirt touching. She did say that the level of intimacy that we had together was the furthest that she'd experienced. But to me, it was quite tame. And when I say this, I'm not trying to devalue how she feels about this at all. I'm you should devalue because it's stupid. The way she feels about it is fucking stupid. Yeah, he's 26 and she was 18. Which I again, that's weird. This guy's a fucking weirdo. But it's not, he, it's not, he's not a pedophile. 
point out that we clearly view things differently. And this is something that I've learned from now, and I will be taking very seriously moving forward. And I'm truly sorry, Casey, for not realizing this and not taking this difference into account. It is clearly something that is extremely important to you, and I'm sorry. Even after everything I've just said, things would be very different if I could just say that I asked her if she was comfortable and she had said yes. But the fact is, I never did ask this. As I mentioned, there are a lot of things that she said she thought that I wasn't aware of that if I had known would have changed a lot. And going forward, this will be something that I take into account in every interaction I have with anyone, sexual or not. I am sorry, Katie, and I'm sorry for. Like, what, what, what red flag do you mean, Queen Bee? Will affect you going forward, and I'm sorry that everything got to this point. But I just hope that after hearing my perspective, you can understand that I never had any bad intentions and never meant to hurt you. I think that is essentially all the information that I can add to the situation. After her first statement, I actually disagreed a lot with how things were portrayed and was pretty confused by all the details. But her most recent response made things a lot clearer to me. And now I do think we agree pretty much on the order of events. We just don't necessarily agree on my intentions. But again, I do really hope that her seeing this can help with that. There are actually a couple of other things that I wanted to mention before I end this video that are not at all as important as anything else I've said before this. But this seems like the right time to address other concerns that people have had. The first thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Hans's girlfriend at the time, Andy. I was in a call with Hans and Andy was in the shower. This is so stupid to add on to the end of your fucking group like rape response that's <laughs> so stupid to add on to the end here dude oh my god i made a, a inappropriate comment about my friend's girlfriend oh my god and it was known that we could hit andy as we had brought it up previously within the call she was talking very sexually with puns essentially complaining that puns wasn't leaving the call to go have sex with her in the shower i don't remember the exact quote that i said but this is what andy quotes me saying if you don't go in the shower and have sex with andy i will i do remember saying something along these lines essentially saying come on puns go have sex with your girlfriend who's begging you to go what's the red flag though like uh why is that a red flag like, well, like, what do you say specifically? That's all. Sex with her in the shower, or someone else will. But I do understand how this could be disrespectful, and that was not my intention at all. Knowing how she felt after the fact, I do feel bad, and I'm sorry to both puns and Andy for this comment. My friends, including puns, we often say ridiculous things, and that's just our type of answer. If anyone ever said something to me about me making them uncomfortable, I would obviously do my best to try to avoid making them uncomfortable. But Andy wasn't really one of my friends, so it makes more sense that she doesn't really know that's the type of way that I joke around, and I hope that she understands that I didn't mean any harm by that. Could she not go to him and talk to him about it instead of blasting it on the internet first? I mean, yeah, true. It's just. <laughs> That'd be too, that'd make too much sense, okay? Okay. <laughs> she has to talk about it on the internet, okay? <laughs> that would make too much sense, all right? Also, they were friendly in DMs for like months after this, so she very well could have done that. But. Finally, something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time, but have never done, is the Technoblade charity stream situation. People were the Technoblade charity stream situation. We really need to talk about this, guys. You know, I know I was just accused of sexually assaulting a girl, but you know, we need to talk about the Technoblade. <laughs> That's what's important right now, guys. Soundboards during the beginning of the stream. For context, this event wasn't intended to be serious or sad. It was a for fun event and to celebrate the memory of Technoblade. A narrative that was massively spread was that I played this soundboard during Technodad's speech. But that actually was not the case, and I had played it during a time where all the creators were in a call just talking to each other before the speech had even started. I actually called Technodad a few days after the event because I wanted to make sure that he wasn't upset or uncomfortable with anything that I'd said. And we discussed it all. He told me that he didn't have a problem with what I did and that the public reaction was actually pretty crazy to him. And then he invited me to the next year's event. Another thing that people criticized me for is that I didn't donate to the charity. But again, this actually isn't the case. I donated two thousand dollars to the charity after the event, but I did do it anonymously, so obviously I'm not surprised at all that people don't know this. I donated anonymously because I just didn't really want to make it about me and just donated because I wanted to. Obviously, there was no actual requirement for the creators in the event to donate to the charity at all, and them just streaming to their audience and incentivizing the viewers to donate was not. Now, I did this specifically by. <laughs> I think George and Reed just need to come out and stop sexually assaulting people. True, true. Maybe just stop being a Minecraft YouTuber. That would fix it. Live as they came through on my stream. And because of me doing this, over 2% of the donations actually contain my name within the donation message. So I think it's pretty unfair to come at me for not donating to the charity when I was clearly making a big effort to get my viewers to donate. And beside that, I did donate $2,000. I just wanted to mention this. I, I know it's kind of way off topic compared to the other two things I've mentioned in this video, but it is something that's been constantly brought up since it happened as a way of showing that I'm a bad person. So I wanted to say They're all gay. True. Everything I have to say. So I hope you can understand. They have the gay swagger. And yeah. Holy shit, dude. Oh, this has been a fun as fuck stream. Uh, I'm probably have to get it off though. Tomorrow? Okay. I don't know about this, guys, but tomorrow I really want to stream again. If I'm fucking not completely dead, maybe I'll just drink like 10 Red Bulls tomorrow. Then I'll be completely energized. I'll be completely ready to stream again. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do. My point is that more commentary. People will spend eight hours covering the girl's video, pausing at every point. Uh, every point hat. Seems sketchy. Um, yeah, I don't know. What did the video just played through quickly? No questions asked. Uh, I mean, that's because his video makes sense, right? I don't know. I if you can point to any specific holes, I'm willing to look at them. Any think like any red flags, as you said, I'm willing to look at them and take them into consideration. But uh, I didn't observe any. I played both her video and his video at two times speed. And, uh, I mean, if I didn't pause, it's just because I didn't have anything to add. <laughs> Hermitcraft SMP there, dope. Yeah, you say that until it's Hermit, Hermageddon, or, I don't know. I like, I like the, uh, drama names we have, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm so tired. I need to go to bed, guys. Thank you all so much for coming out to the stream. I had a lot of fun, okay, guys? Lots and lots of fun.
he beat the case that they gave him true i'm tired though i need to go to bed thank you guys all so much i love you all